Fox Sports. We are We are Well, it's a beautiful day. Camelback Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. Weather is going to be touching 90 degrees. And today in Cactus League Baseball, it's the San Diego Padres and the Milwaukee Brewers. And hi, everybody. Welcome to Maryvale Baseball Park, spring training home of the Brewers. I'm Bill Schroeder, Jerry Augustine. And Jerry, I think something's missing here. Did somebody forget to show up? You're an analyst. I'm an analyst. No play-by-play -play guy. What, what's up? It's going to be creative. We get to talk baseball the whole game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Two old guys playing, uh, talking some baseball. And uh, let's first talk about a guy that is having an interesting spring this year, Augie. Matt Garza not guaranteed a spot in this rotation. Well, you know, one thing about Matt Garza, it all starts with health. And he may put himself to a rigorous routine of working out this winter and really come, to, come in great shape. And one thing that Matt Garza wants to do, he wants to be healthy. It's all about Matt staying healthy. Last year, last start of spring, training went on to be out for 60 days got a late start 19 starts last year you got to look at his last six starts though era of 2.97 really did a nice job yeah giddy up cowboy and michael reed having a good time in stretching today keon broxton having a red hot spring solidifying his spot in center field and the grade eight ryan braun in the lineup here this afternoon Maryvale Baseball Park, West Valley in Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Padres and the Brewers, and you couldn't ask for a better day for baseball. Andy Green in his second year as the skipper of the San Diego Padres. He took the Padres to a 68-94 record a year ago in rebuilding mode, very similar to what's going on with the Brewers this year. Both looking to see some young players and build for the future. So Andy Green with his work cut out. Now let's check out his starting lineup here against Milwaukee today. You got Alan Cordoba at third base. Eric Ibar at short. Will Myers, the veteran over at first base. He'll bat third. Alex Dickerson, the DH. Hunter Renfro. Franchi Cordero. Luis Torrens, the catcher. Rafael Ortega and former Brewer Luis Sardinius, the switch hitting second baseman uh, in the ninth spot here today. Your Potawatomi lineup brought to you by Potawatomi. Bring your night to life. And the Brewers, okay, they've been playing some pretty good baseball as of late. I mean, they get off to a slow start, but uh, yesterday in split squad action, lost a couple of games, but that snapped a six-game winning streak. Yeah, they won six out of eight. You look like the way this team has started. The one thing they want to do, you want to prove on your defense. You want to see where you are offensively. You got a lot of new young players. You got some lot of players playing in that World Baseball Classic. So it gives guys an opportunity, it gives Craig Council an opportunity to take a good look at some of these young players, and it's really paying off. They're making some eye-popping plays. I mean, center field, the middle infielders, uh, there's a battle at second base this year, and 
Second year manager, third year overall, second full season with the Brewers, Craig Council. Very happy the way things are going this spring. His team has played you know, split squad games two of the last three days, so his, uh, his squad a little bit overused at this point. Well, he wants playing time. You know, he's getting the opportunity to get these young players to get him some experience. And, you know, the, with this one thing this organization wants to find out, where are we at? What kind of a ball club are we going to have? This year, he's getting that opportunity in spring. And Craig Council wants to find out where Matt Garza is at at this point. Uh, as we mentioned on our open, not necessarily locked into that starting rotation, Augie. He has to earn it this spring. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But when you look at Matt Garza, you got to think about one word, preparation. In the offseason, he went on a rigorous workout routine that he did all, all year long. You look at his starts last year. He had 19 starts, ended up with a 6-8 and eight record with a 4.51. But you look at his last six starts, ERA of 2.97 ending strong he's bringing that over into spring training hopefully to get off to a good start and he came into camp in, in great shape according to his manager so Garza getting his third appearance down here in spring training let's check the defense set by Craig Counts behind Garza today the outfield very young very fast Ryan Braun his second start in spring got Broxton in center field what a spring he's having along with Domingo Santana Santana red hot Shaw Sogard Rivera and Thames from third to first and Jet Bandy uh, behind home plate. So there's your defense for Milwaukee. Ryan Braun, a couple of uh, at-bats in yesterday's game off to, uh, he did not play early in spring. He well, he doesn't feel as though he needs all those that many at-bats to get himself ready. Yeah, he, when you talk about Ryan Braun, it's about getting ready for the season. He's been here long enough. He understands what he can do. He's a professional hitter and he needs, thinks he needs right around that 25 to 30 at-bats and he'll be ready to go. So Ryan Braun being in the outfield, uh, getting a couple at-bats today is going to be pretty good. And that's exactly what he did last year. Yeah, 25, 30 at-bats and get off to a very good start. So we'll see how it all shakes out. This very young Brewers ball club, particularly young, you know, with the WBC, the World Baseball Classic, classic going on. Uh, Craig Council getting an opportunity uh, to see what he has, not only in the big league level, but maybe down in the minor leagues as well. So Matt Garza finishing up. His warm-ups here today, you got home plate umpire Tom Woodring on the bases, Dana DeMuth, Jeff Nelson, and Chris Segal. So the four-man umpiring crew behind Garza, and as always is with Matt Garza, it takes a little bit longer to get himself ready in that first inning. He's kind of a creature of habit in that regard. He does. He, he's the type of guy that goes out, and when he go, works in a bullpen, he takes that extra time and wants to be prepared. And I think the one thing he has to do, he's learning how to make adjustments. As you go on in your, in your career, you have to do that. Back several years ago, he could throw that fastball by guys. Now he's learning how to command the fastball. And he's uh, been off to a pretty good start so far this year. There's his game's Se uh, third appearance. Uh, you figure about 65 pitches, 50, 60 pitches for Garza. Hopefully he gets through three innings here today. And the Padres will start it off with Alan Cordoba, the third baseman, leading it off. A lot of jobs open for the Padres in spring training. Yeah, you look at this team, they're kind of in that rebuilding stage. They're starting over. When you look where they were several years ago, really not a new players from last year. Garza's first pitch, swinging a dribbler to short. Sargard up with it over to first for out number one. So Garza gets an out. Looked like a little off-speed pitch. Took a little bit off, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, talk about the transition that uh, Garza's going through right now. It's been a long time since he's really had to earn a spot in a starting rotation. Well, you know, last year, you, you know, when you look at what he's done, he's always been that guy who could, had the opportunity to come in and get that fastball, get in certain counts and challenge people. That doesn't mean he doesn't challenge people now, but it's more about early in counts, pitching to locations, and I'll tell you, really important pitches for him are the breaking ball, the off-speed stuff. If he can get that in stray, get that into a good locations, it makes that fastball that much better. Yep, and keep that baseball down. Eric Ibar now the shortstop, switch hitter. And the Brewers coming in at eight and seven, playing some pretty good baseball, really swinging the bats well. These young players have been uh, doing a good job with their at-bats. Defense has been pretty good. You know, Garza's pitch, a line drive into center field. Broxton going back and makes the catch easily. A few steps in front of the warning track. Tough sun field today. No clouds in the sky. The sun out bright today. And Center field, left field, two uh, trouble spots out here in this ballpark. It is, and I'll tell you why. You couldn't ask for a better day for baseball. Got the beautiful skies, just some light clouds in the in the distance a little bit, but uh, beautiful day for baseball. And the one thing we like about Matt Garza early so far, 
throwing strikes. Throwing strikes and uh, keeping the baseball down. That's the key. Will Myers, you can see his season last year, 157 games, so he was a dependable player for Andy Green. Andy Green. That guards his first pitch, a breaking ball low, 1-0. Yeah, I think you look at a player that they want to build around, and you'd have to probably have to look at this guy right here as a Will Myers as a guy. They're kind of building around. He was their offensive strength last year, so he's probably one of one of the few players that are back from last year. Yeah, and having a terrific spring, seven for 17, already a couple of home runs. A 1-0 pitch down low. Will Myers making the adjustment, which really came in as a third baseman. Moved over to first has really solidified that for the Padres. And he's kind of the guy like Ryan Braun is with this Brewers ball club in a rebuilding mode. You have to have that one veteran that can kind of keep things together, if you will. 2 0 pitch up high, 3 0 to Will Myers. So that rotation has been uh, throwing the baseball pretty well down here in spring. Junior Garrett, Zach Davies, the only two starting pitchers that know they're in the rotation who would have thought that going into spring last year other guys throwing the ball well here's a 3-0 to Will Myers he's swinging fouls it back yeah you have to like where the starting rotation has been especially when you look at this pitching staff you look at major league of everybody in spring training the Brewers are fourth in the RA and National League third pretty much where they ended up uh, what is the last 30 mm -hmm. games or 3.13 ERA led all of baseball last year you did your homework didn't you yeah I did I was studying I've been studying all night Ron. you're not just a pretty face all you well a long way to go from that <laughs> <laughs> three one down low he walks uh, Myers with two outs so a man at first base and Garza with his first walk bring up Alex Dickerson the designated hitter you have designated hitters in the lineup even in the National League ballparks until what about 10 days before right. camp breaks you give your starting pitchers some at bats to get them you know accustomed to getting in that bat batter's box and maybe dropping down some bunts swinging the bats I really like that rule it gives the manager an opportunity to get some at bats for their players and hit pitchers don't really want to hit anyway pitchers like to hit though uh, some of them some, some are do, good some right do, yes. did you like some. to hit uh, yes, but they never would allow it. No. Did you no. hit the minor leagues? Yes, I did. And? Not too good. <laughs> but you still liked it. Oh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Myers with a pretty good lead over at first base. There it takes off and stops, and Dickerson fouls it straight back. Our fun was actually at Rock on Sundays. Cal McClish would take all the pitchers out, and we'd choose teams, and we'd play. We'd get the hit for about an hour. So mm -hmm. that was, I don't know if I could call it our claim to fame or... Just having fun. We enjoyed that, though. And his full name was? Calvin Coolidge, Julius Caesar, Tuscahoma, McClish. <laughs> the chief. I ask you that every time you bring his name up. <laughs> what a great one guy. One ball, one strike to Alex Dickerson. There goes Myers. He takes all ball in the dirt. Bandy's throw a little bit high. A uh, good backup by Yadiel Rivera at second base. So a stolen base for Will Myers. Puts him in scoring position for Dickerson. Brewers very pleased with the way they're catching core. All three of them have been throwing a baseball. Good, quick delivery. Actually, Will Myers got a nice jump on that. He was a little bit, guys, a little bit late going to the going to the plate, and uh, Brandy came up, rushed it just a little bit. Ball went off target. This is normally what happens when you rush a throw to second base. So two and one catches the outside corner. Two and two. I think that's the toughest thing, Rock, and you can talk about that a little bit better about not trying to be too quick behind the plate and when, when you try and make up for a a good jump nothing really good ever happens you end up throwing one away or making matters worse so you're best off just taking your normal throw to second base and hope for the best guards are from the stretch and fouled back Padres are going to be looking for offense they're going to be looking for pitching Traded away Matt Kemp last year. They traded away their closer, Rodney, last year. So they're looking for a closer. They're hoping that somebody's going to emerge. In a tough division with the Giants and the Dodgers. Good curveball. Yeah, lifts it out of play down the left field line. Yeah, there's no question. They're in a little bit of a rebuild now. Everybody has their different ways in which they're going about it. We all know about David Stearns, about 
obtaining guys and then developing and being able to maintain and keep them in the organization. I think that's kind of the, uh, the way a lot of teams are going about it. It seems like this San Diego Padre are, is going following suit right with that. Trying to uh, you know, build from within to save some money. Important part of the economics of the game and how you develop a team. So two outs, man at second. Two balls and two strikes on the designated hitter, Dickerson. Bandy wants to pitch down the zone. Curveball lifted into center field. Broxton going back. Right at the warning track and hauls it in. So Garza with a walk, but able to get out of the inning unscathed. We'll head to the Brewers half of the first right after this. be touching 90 <laughs> degrees today and uh, we are very thankful that we are in the booth in the shade perfect in the booth and this is a good ballpark to get some sun but don't want to get too much here's the Brewers lineup here today got Broxton Thames Braun top three in the batting order we got Shaw Santana Aguilar big uh, right-handed designated hitter today Jet Bandy Eric Sogard and Yadiel Rivera round out the Potawatomi starting lineup Potawatomi bring your night to life as Paul Clemens toes the rubber for the Padres today. Yeah, he's making his third appearance of the spring looking for his first win and it came over to the Padres in Actually, came, we got Tr Trevor Cahill you know. for some reason. Trevor Cahill, the veteran right-hander, was supposed to be Clemens. Clemens is listed as the starter, so the Padres throwing us a curve right off the bat. Clem Cahill, a changeup specialist. He's yeah. making his third appearance in his second start of spring. We've seen him before. Right. Yeah, he's uh, been a very serviceable starter, reliever, spent some time with the Cubs. Ground ball to second base, gobbles it up over to first for out number one. Well, I talk about Kean Broxton in the spring this young man is having. Amazing. He's well, certainly in, going into spring training. Everybody said, you know, it looks like you're going to have a chance to win the spot. He's done nothing to not win that spot at this point. Well, you look at what he does. He can do so many things at that leadoff spot, too. You see where he, he can hit, hit for power. He can hit for average. He's hitting 346 in spring and runs the base as well, can steal bases for you. So he's really given the, the Brewers an opportunity to take a good look at him mm -hmm. to see how they want to go or how they want to work the top of the lineup. Yep, and uh, Eric Thames up for Milwaukee, first base. And Cahill, a fast worker. He's got a terrific changeup. Remember that in his days and with the Arizona Diamondbacks. That pitch up. Thames spent three years in Korea. He was a rock star over in Korea. Big numbers, very popular, and uh, with the success that he had over in the Korean League, here he is with the Brewers, signed a three-year deal. 
Best ball up. And he's a guy with spring training is going to get a lot of at bats. Mm -hmm. He started out in the spring taking a lot of pitches just trying to get a sense for his his timing seeing the baseball seeing more fastballs over here. Three one just a bit off the outside corner and he'll draw a walk. So seeing the baseball paying off for Eric Thames. See Craig Council putting him up at the top of that lineup giving him the opportunity to see more more pitches and get more at bats. You know, Rock had the opportunity to start uh, go up to lacrosse a couple weeks ago and for the loggers barbecue kickoff. Mm -hmm. And they are so happy to have Thames with the Brewers. He played up there and one of the most popular players they had and all of the lacrosse area is excited about Eric yep. Thames being a, in a brewer uniform. Yep, terrific young man. We talked to him. We had him on our air last week. Interviewed him when he came out of the ball game. Here's Ryan Braun, his second game. They cut fastball up and away. Always good to have Ryan Braun in the lineup. I mean, you could talk about with Craig Council his batting order, and one thing is for sure, the number three spot's pretty much taken. That's true. What a comeback season he had last year, and his 11th season this year, Boy, terrific numbers. You look at his approach and the way he went about his job each and every day, and you know the Brewers needed that. They needed that guy in the lineup to. To carry the load and be that that focus point in the lineup, and Ryan did just a good job at that. Mm -hmm. Last year, came into camp, was uh, recovering from that back surgery, and he had too many at bats until the very end. So, Craig Council, Braun have talked about it. That's what they're going to do this year: 25, 30 at bats, get him ready, and finds himself ahead in the count, three and zero. Oh. You know that's what happens when you have a your your key player having a good relationship with the manager. They can, you know, you can sit back, you can talk, you can set up a program, and you know, for Ryan to understand what he's needed at and how they want to use him, I think that's really important for mm -hmm. Ryan. Keep him healthy too. Yeah, Ronnie swinging on a three-one pitch up out of the zone. Just got a note here, Rock, that Cl Paul Clemens will now pitch later in the game. Okay. So we can talk about it. It was later. nice of them to tell us. Yeah. Throwing us a curve right out of listed as the starter, but hey, we made an adjustment. This is what today is going to be all about, all the adjustments. That's right. We're not going to have to find roles so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have fun talking baseball. Right. Ryan Braun, a line drive, a bullet out to left. Diving play out there in left field. Ortega can't come up with it. Hey, let's check out Thames. They bobble it out in left. Braun's going to hold up at second, and Thames will come around to score. On a ringing double by Ryan Braun on a 3-1 count. Boy, did he hit that baseball. Yeah, got a ball up in the zone and put a good swing on it. The Cahill earlier in the lineup really went up in the zone and got him to swing through it. But see this pitch, ball up in the zone just a tad. Ryan goes out, puts a good swing on it, drives it in the left field for a double. Check out the balance on this swing. Oh, he's just incredible. I mean, here's a guy that hasn't had too many at-bats. He can roll out of bed on Christmas Eve. And put a swing in a baseball just like that. It's just incredible ability. You know, you got to give Ryan Braun credit. He really understands himself so well. Knows what he needs to to work on. Knows when he how many at bats he needs, and uh, just goes up there each and every day and goes through that routine and does a nice job. Yep, Travis Shaw up from Milwaukee. First pitch in for a strike. Part of the lineup balance that David Stearns and Craig Council were seeking in the offseason needed more left-handed at bats. And some power from the left side. Well, they got it. They're hoping from Thames and Shaw. Well, when they go to Miller Park and they see that short porch in right field, and ball has a tendency to carry out to right field. So really set up nice for both Shaw and Thames. Yeah, Shaw had 16 home runs with the Red Sox a year ago. Fastball up two and one. So you know, one thing that Rock was impressive on, on on Braun's double is Thames right off the crack of the bat got a good start, knew what was happening, saw he was going to dive, and really his hustle allowed him to score pretty easy on and that for play. For a big guy, he can run a little bit. Yes, he can. And fouled down to first baseline. Two balls, two strikes to Travis Shaw. We're going to see if we can't get a little bit of a chat with Travis Shaw, Shaw after he's done. You see Travis Shaw taking one deep into center field against the White Sox. So a little bit of the power that the Brewers are hoping that he brings to Miller Park this year. Yeah, he's got that nice, comfortable swing where he hit the ball all over the ballpark. 
trying to uh, put a comeback sinker right on the edge. Didn't bite. It's going to be a full count. So Cahill throwing a lot of pitches in this inning. Yeah, we remember more with that fastball changeup more. It looks like today, like today, he's trying to really pitch with that fastball, really dictate to the hitter what he wants to do. Full count swung on, bounced over the mound. Yeah, with the play coming in, Sardinius, the former Brewer, able to make a good play to first base. Remember, Sardinius came over to the Brewers. We saw him in limited action with Milwaukee. He's bounced around a little bit. Making a nice play right there on Travis Shaw. That's a tough play coming in like that. You, uh, you have to go for that short hop. That's about all you can do, but got his glove down, stayed down on the ball, and was able to make a nice play. Well, there's a lot of athletic middle infielders in baseball these days making plays that, you know, that, that seem routine for these guys, but back in the old days, Augie, that wasn't so routine. No. Very athletic guys out there. Boy, Domingo, cover, yeah, they, Dom, Domingo Santana getting his first at bat today. Sorry about that, Rock, but they, they cover so much ground. Not only are they positioned better, but they cover so much ground. It's and they got such strong arms. They're getting good throwing positions. Their footwork is so done so well that they can get a good position throw and make that good firm throw. And that's the thing, the throwing arm, incredible. That's right. Santana having a nice spring. Swinging the bat well. 1 0 pitch fouled off into the Padres dugout. Santana looks as though he's going to be the right fielder out there. Get off to a bit of a slow start, but well, his last uh, four or five games, you can see what he's been able to do. Three home runs, had a two home run game earlier. Eight RBIs. Fastball up. He's another one of those hitters that can show you versatility. Last spring, if you remember, was leadoff most of the spring and uh, before he got hurt. And, I think he hit like 350 last year in spring training. So here's a guy who can hit for average, hit for power, and he can run a little bit also. 2-1 mm -hmm. pitch down low, 3-1. and one. So Cahill having a difficult time here in the first inning. Getting ahead in the count. How much of it, Augie, do you think maybe the fact if you're Santana, you're a little bit extra motivated with the way these young players are pushing them out there in the outfield? You got Cordell, you got you know, Brinson, those kind of guys. Ground ball to third. We'll talk about that when we come back. But the Brewers put a run up in the first on a Ryan Braun double. We head to the second. The Brewers up one to nothing. Head to the Padres top of the second inning. It is a hill day on his Saturday. Remember, of course, we don't have to do that here, but daylight savings time start is tonight. Spring ahead. So folks in Milwaukee, everywhere but uh, you know, Arizona and a couple other places have to That's uh, right. bring their clocks ahead. Spring ahead. Doesn't happen here. So don't move your clock. It's the same. It's beautiful here. <laughs> Why change when it's so nice like this, Rock? <laughs> right. I noticed some hesitation there. I know you're looking for me to react react to it, but 
I don't know if I like daylight savings time. I yeah. They should keep it as is. Keep it the way, just keep it one time all year long? Yeah. yeah why not, right? Garza working his second inning, 16 pitches so far today, and was relatively efficient in the first inning. Hunter Renfro, the right fielder, leading it off here in the second. Garza's pitch, a hit hard down the third baseline, but foul. Hunter Renfro, but not the wide receiver or the slot receiver for the Clemson Tiger national football team. And you would know that. Who caught the winning touchdown Absolutely. in the championship game, Hunter Renfro. That was a great football game. No relation to this Hunter Renfro. I think that is like as excited as I've ever seen you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get excited a lot, but not like that. Wow. Two strike pitch down in the dirt. Yeah, that was fun. You know, I went to school with Hunter Renfro's uncle. Oh, is that right? William Renfro. He was the manager. Kind of uh, took care of the equipment and things like uh -huh. that. Now he's a millionaire <laughs> in South Carolina. So, yeah. Got a good start because you were there, right? Yep, right. There's Garza's pitch down, down and away, two and two. I well, like the fact that Garza, when he's throwing the breaking ball, not leaving it upstairs. I mean, when he would give up his home runs, it would normally be the breaking pitches up in the zone, and those are the ones that get hit pretty good. Fastball grounded up the middle and into center field, so Hunter Renfro with a base hit. First base run of the game for the Padres. You know, I think when you're talking about Matt, it, it's the big thing with him is the the adjustments you have to make as a pitcher. We all we talked about that you can't be overpowering and you got to pitch in and out. You got to keep the ball down. You got to. But I think the most important thing when you go to a transition like he is and the success he's had in the major leagues is you have to pitch ahead. Mm -hmm. Learning how to pitch ahead and get your getting all your pitches over to play. If you can throw that good break ball down the strike zone, that allows your fastball to locate a little bit. You can make some mistakes with it, but it's all about getting that good location and getting ahead of hitters. And as Frenchy Cordero steps into the box, fastball in the inside corner. Is it a different spring training for Garza? Obviously it is because the word is from the Brewers he has to earn his spot. Does he do anything different this spring? I mean, is he more worried about results than he has in the past, or is he just continue to do what he's done in spring training? I think it started for Matt last year. I think at the end of the season when he went home with the idea that he had to start something then, and he went through that real rigorous, rigorous routine where he was actually underweight for a while. He had to gain some weight because mm -hmm. his body fat was so low. So. I think he came to spring training with the idea that right from spring training, he was going to do what he had to do, and that's get ready the quickest. He had to prove to the pitching staff and everybody else, this organization, that he belongs here. 0-1 oh, pitch grounded over to Rivera, over to second base. Can he turn two? Nope. They cannot. So nice play by Yadiel Rivera. There's that throwing arm, that good range, the quickness, able to get the lead out at second base. You know, we look at, at guards, it's the, the delivery. It's about staying back. And one thing we saw when he leg went up in the air, he didn't start going towards the plate until he got to that good position. Then he everything goes at the same time, getting over that front side of the body. That is so important for Matt Garza. Sometimes he rushes, arm drags, balls up in his own. He gets over that front leg, he can stay down his own. It makes his curveball that much more effective also. As Luis Torrin steps into the box, the Padres catcher today. Cordero taking a short lead. Here's the pitch right down the middle. I would imagine it was a transition for Garza, and you pitched a long time in the big leagues, had a very nice career. I mean, obviously, nobody throws as hard as their career goes on as they did early. Some guys have a tough transition with that when they know they don't have that big fastball anymore well it's not only being able to throw the fastball and you know younger in his career you if you watch Matt Garza he would come right down the middle of the plate with it you can't do that as you get along you can still throw the ball down the middle but you got either got to learn how to elevate it or keep it down like you've been talking about earlier and I think that's where the transition or that's where the adjustment comes in being able to locate those pitches in the strike zone yeah, there's that pitch elevated, but a little bit away from the hitter Torrens that time. 
I think when you look at the strike zone, you look at the four quadrants of the strike zone, you got to pitch to the outer parts of the strike zone. And when you do that, you can stay in different areas and be successful. And I think that's where Matt is learning how to make the adjustments. It seemed like last year, when he got his complete, uh, quality starts, he really had that good breaking ball and really pitched with his fastball well. Good pace, too. Yes, he did. Yeah. Well, he's ahead of Torrens 0 and 2. And here's the pitch, fouled back. And one thing I noticed, too, is uh, with the, the man at first base, going with his regular delivery, slide steps, I mean, is that typically something he would be working on this early in spring? I think I think so. I think, you know, a lot of times you, you see him in the other years, he said he's going to take his time and work on pitches and see where his pitches are. I, mean, I think he came to spring training with the idea this year that he wants to take that step forward. He has to get off to that good start. He wants to be one of the starters on this staff. He wants to prove to this organization that he can still pitch. He came ready to pitch. 0-2 down in the dirt. It's got to be extra motivating factor, though, when you come to spring training and everybody is saying that you have to win a spot in the rotation. I mean, that has to be <laughs> that has to be a shock to the system for a guy that's been around as long as Garcia. He's 33. He's pitched in postseason. He's thrown a no-hitter. And uh, it looks like he's taken that opportunity and... Uh, well, I think one thing Matt saw, how many great arms they have here. You know, how many good arms they have and who's 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 got the quality stuff to pitch in the big leagues. And right there, when you see when you're vying, you got six or seven or eight, and you could probably go as deep as ten starters with this ball club. And any one of those guys could be pitching in the big leagues right now. So when you got those numbers, you have to go and prove yourself. And as it goes along, it, it I think it's good for Matt. I think Matt needed that this year to say, hey, you know what? Come earn it. Let's see what you can do. All right. Well, right now, Garrett and Davies have a spot in the rotation. It's Garza, Peralta, Anderson. Chase Anderson, who threw pretty well over in Talking Stick yesterday, Tommy Malone. And runner takes off. Fly ball into right field. Santana going back, able to make the catch. So... Cordero was running on the pitch, went by the bag, had to retag second base, and is able to get back into first base. So Torrens hit that one pretty well, but a good running catch by Domingo Santana. Yeah, you look at those stars, Rock, then you add a, a couple of young pitchers in there also, and you got this Josh Hader who's not that far off. And uh, you got some good guys that you, any one of those guys, if everything turned right for them, they could come up and be pitching the big leagues. Yeah. And so. You've got a little bit of a log jam, but a, it's a good thing to have with, with a young ball club. Because you never go through just five starters in the season. <laughs> well, I don't, what was it? What do I remember back? Like, was it 2008 or 2009 where Bruce used like six starters all year yeah, long? Right, yeah. That doesn't happen too often. Rafael Ortega getting an at bat. Two outs, man at first. Brewers up one to nothing. Garza's pitch up high. See that we talked about that delivery that time. He just got a little jump. He's get, it seems like when he's getting two outs, he's getting a, I don't call it anxiousness, but he just tried to calm himself down right there. It just got a little jumpy to the plate. And when you do that, your arm drags, and then you get the ball up in the zone a little bit. Runner takes off. Bandy able to pick it in the dirt, but no throw. So Cordero able to steal the base. So just like in the first inning with two outs, Padre is able to steal the base and get into scoring position. Not much Bandy could do with that. That was a pitch down in the dirt. Tough but ball to handle. It was incorporating a bit of a shift pretty much straight away in the outfield not too deep when blowing out the center as it usually does here at the ballpark here's Garza line drive a couple of hops over to Yadiel Rivera over to first baseman Thames and Garza puts up another zero here in the second inning well, we head to the bottom of the second one and nothing crew.
you can enjoy the ultimate flexibility with the Brewers Ballpark Pass. For just $49, you'll get access to 13 games in April with digital tickets sent directly to your phone. To learn more, visit Brewers.com slash ballpark. Would you know how to do that? I mean, use your phone as your ticket? No way. I, don't, I think I'd be kind of confused. I wouldn't be able to find it, first of all. I can do two things on my phone. I can call and I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're not much of a texter, are you? No, I try, but I'm not too good. Yeah, it's okay. Learning. Yeah. I'm going to take a class. <laughs> Jesus Aguilar, the Brewers' designated hitter, is going to lead it off in the second inning. Aguilar, Bandy, and Sogard. First pitch in for a strike, Trevor Cahill. Last year with the Cubs, 50 appearances. He made one start and a 274 earned run average for Trevor Cahill. Great numbers. Well, he's been one of those guys that can do just about to have that flexibility. You talk about having flexibility, being versatile, whatever you want to call it, as a pitcher. And Trevor Cahill's done that. He's done it with the Diamondbacks last year with the Cubs. Uh, important part to have on a ball club. Two and one to Aguilar, who's off to a pretty good start this spring. Big fella. 30 home runs last year down in the minor leagues. And Bruce are thinking about him maybe as a backup first baseman. He's a right-handed batter. Thames a lefty. We'll see how that all shakes out. The two one up high. Well, you watch batting practice and you just see him get in there and hit the, <laughs> watch the ball come off his bat. It's something to, something something special to watch. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of uh, jobs available for this no, Brewers ball club. Not. You know, it's, not. it seems as though the outfield's been set. And fouled into the stands over the first base dugout. Big swing for Thames on a 3-1 pitch. Aaron Perez, who just continues to impress. Neuenheis in the outfield, along with Broxton, Braun, and Santana. So, no mystery there. There isn't. Aaron Perez, what a story he's become. I well, mean, you, are there enough accolades to talk about the way this guy has progressed? You could spend days. Everything he does, he does well. You can put him anywhere. And I tell you what, when you got, have a guy like that, that allows your roster mm -hmm. to be expanded because he can do so many things for you. I was so, so surprised last year when they put him at first base. I thought, ah, you do a good job. He made some great plays over at first base as well as other positions. And it's not just the fundamentals of, you know, tagging the bag and making catches, making throw. I mean, positioning himself, the instincts and some of the you know, fine points of playing first base, you know, bunt plays, cutoffs, those types of things. He's just, he's just a baseball player. That's how you, how you describe the guy. So Jet Bandy up for the Brew Crew. Man at first, nobody out. Fast ball inside. So Cahill continues to have a difficult time with the strike zone. He's thrown 29 pitches already. Maybe a short outing for him here today. It seems like with his fastball, he's not able to command the strike zone, and that's where his strength is, so he can use that changeup effectively. 1-0 breaking pitch down. Jet Bandy, Susak, and Manny Pena, the three guys battling for two spots for that catcher's position for the, for the Brewers. Bandy swinging the bat pretty well. There's his numbers last year with the Angels. But swinging the bat well in spring. Fastball driven deep, but foul. He's got quick hands on the inside corner. Yeah, he does. He really does. Big guy, about your size. A lot like you mm -hmm. when you played. Much leaner. Much quicker. Good, quick bat. Good, quick bat. I need to get on that Garza program where his body fat was too low. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to have a problem like that? Oh, my God. Yeah. I could only wish. Yeah. Well, we don't try hard enough. No, that's true. So two balls, one strike to Jet Bandy. Aguilar taking his lead at first. They're not even holding him on. Not a guy that's going to run. And swinging a chopper over to third base. Over to second base. No, missed it. Bad throw. Yeah, Cordova couldn't get it out of his glove. Threw it too high. Sardinius not able to make the play, so that'll be an error on Cordova, the third baseman. Tough play. It's a short hop. He comes up, and, you know, as soon as he got the ball caught in his glove, it really the best spot to go is first base and try to make a, a throw off balance and 
threw it high. It didn't look like he had a very good grip on the baseball. I mean, yeah. it's about as routine as it gets. It's not going to be a double play, so just take your time. That's right. And just air mails it out there into the gap, so all hands safe on the bases. So two on, nobody out for Eric Sogard. Looking to make this club as a utility player. Pitch in for a strike. Sogard, Sogard with some big league time. Yeah, Sogard's second straight day at shortstop. Yesterday over talking stick, played short. As you can see, not a home run hitter. Swinging a ground ball back to first. Home. I should say the mound. So this going to be a one to six to three double play, getting Trevor Cahill out of a jam at this point. So a man at third and two outs. So I said back to first, short, and finally back to the pitcher. So one to six to three. It got to each one. On the double play. So I, I, I guess I got it at some point. Yep. Cahill did a nice job at that. One thing you do, you, you talk about how defense, how important it is. And, you know, we look at what the Brewers are trying to do to improve defensively. But Cahill made a, did a nice job when he got the ball. Waited till the shortstop was just there, made a good firm throw over the base where he's able to catch and throw for the double play. And that's the thing. You don't want to be too quick. You want to make sure one, he made a good throw to short, and they were able to turn it easily. So Yadier Rivera at the plate. And the second baseman. Just a matter of Rivera being able to hit at this level. I mean, he is ready defensively no matter where you put him. Yeah, he can play anywhere in the infield. He is... Got definitely a strong enough arm. He covers a lot of ground. Yesterday, opening up the ball game, made a play behind second base, threw the guy out by a step, and uh, made a nice play. So he's, he can play anywhere in the infield. And once again, being pushed by some of these very young, talented middle infielders that the Brewers have here in spring. Raving, re rave reviews. Everybody you talk to. You know, scouts around the talent level of some of these guys. Here's the pitch. They swung on and missed on a breaking pitch. So two and two to Yadiel Rivera. Yeah, we talk about David Stearns and what he went after. So much talk about him going after middle infielders and center type fielders. And it's really paid off with this organization. Look all the things they've done. And that curveball bounced to first, and Miles will take it himself. Nothing across. Brewers wasted an opportunity. Still have a one to nothing lead as we head to the third. Yep, not a cloud in the sky here in West Phoenix, 53rd and Indian School here in the West Valley in Phoenix, Arizona. Brewers up one to nothing as we head to the top of the third inning. Matt Garza on for his third inning of work. Throwing the baseball pretty well so far. Mentioned that starting rotation. Tommy Malone, Augie, the left-hander that the Brewers are taking a strong look at. It'll be the first time in a long, long time that 
The Brewers would have a left-handed starter. How important do you think that is just to have a lefty in the rotation? Well, so I think it's nice. I think anytime you go in, you can mix it up, have a lefty righty. It's good. And, you know, the Brewers pretty much know what Tommy Malone is. He's got good control. He's got not a power pitcher, but he's got that great changeup. And if he can master that, he's a type of guy that could help this organization, help this pitching staff. Now, Luis Sardini is leading off the Padres' third inning. It'll be Sardinius, Cordova, and Eric Ibar. In the first three here in the third. And Garza is 1-0 up high. Yeah, when you talk about uh, getting that lefty, I, I think it's important you have one. And uh, do you go to it? You got guys like Josh Hader down below, or he was just trying to make the club in spring. And, you, of course, Tommy Alone, who's pitched very well so far this spring, pitch yesterday, did another uh, nice job. So it'll be interesting to see the decisions they do make. And line drive lifted into left field, a little humpback line around the left. So Sardinia is able to lead off the third with a base hit. Now, Sardini is a guy that will run. He's got some pretty good speed. There was a time when we talked about, when we talked about Matt Garza pitching ahead in the count. Here you have the ninth hitter in the lineup. What does he do? He falls behind. He's got to come out to pitch up in his zone. And Sardini, you give him credit, went the other way with the ball for a base hit. Just kind of fought it off on a pitch upstairs. I bring up the leadoff hitter, Alan Cordoba. Grounded to short his first time up. Average lead for Sardinius over at first base. Got to figure the Padres are going to be a team that you figure you're going to try and manufacture runs. I mean, taking extra bases, trying to put the ball in play, particularly because not only do they not have a lot of home run hitters, they hit in a very big ballpark at home, Petco Park. Yes, they do. You have to manufacture <laughs> runs. You look at their ball club, too, last year. It was last in the major leagues in batting average. So it's with all the new players they have, they got to manufacture. So it's, you're going to talk about guys going up there running, pinch, uh, trying to steal bases, hitting the ball the opposite way, hitting behind behind guys. It's going to change your, their offensive strategy a little bit. Yeah, you uh, you just can't try and be a team that hits home runs. Even in, early, in the early days of that ballpark, they had some big home run hitters, Brian Giles and you know guys like that. They scratched their head. The ball was so the ballpark was so big. So guards behind 2 and 0, oh, he finds a strike on the inside corner. I can still remember the night that what Bronny hit two home runs and a triple. Wasn't somebody three home runs and a triple? Three home runs and a triple, yeah. I'll tell you what, that was just unbelievable how far he hit him. And uh, he went to both fields, hit him to left, to right center. What and his triple night. was hit off the off the fence. Yes, it was. In right center. In right center. almost had four, yeah. Yeah, but I remember that. Sardinius takes off, pitches in. A throw by B Bandy is right on the money. And, and easy out. Sardinius and easy out at second base. Boy, quick release by Jet Bandy on a throw to second base, and Augie Garza gave him a quick move and gave him a chance to throw him out. That's where you have, you know, that slide step that he uses, and he, he's starting to get that comfort in it. It's worked on from the beginning of spring training. Don't go back. Let's start something very that he can be consistent on. Don't give that opportunity for a stolen base. And, you know, Jet Bandy did a nice job right there, too. Getting up, nice, firm throw. Took his time, made a good throw. Yeah, didn't rush it. That's the key. And yeah, the 3-1 fouled straight back. It's going to be interesting to see what the Brewers do with this catching situation. You know, you got three catchers that are very similar to each other. I mean, good, solid defensive catchers. I guess it's going to be the one that, that hits the best. And speaking of hitting, we have the best hitting coach in all the big leagues. Darnell Cole's with us in the Brewers dugout. D.C., how's it going down there today? It is going great. Uh, it's been a great spring. Obviously, it was raining early in camp. But now uh, the weather's changed, and with the weather changing, we've uh, had a great camp. You guys have been swinging the bats pretty well. I mean, team batting average near 280. you got to be pleased with that. And uh, a lot of young players you have to look at. How do you sit back, watch some guys you haven't seen a whole lot, and, and at what point do you start evaluating, giving them recommendations as to things they should try and do? Well, I think... Uh for the most part, you try and get a feel for what their routines are, how they go about their work, um, you know, building a trust within the four or five hitting coaches that are in camp, uh, but with the understanding that uh, these guys got here for a reason. In most cases, they're trying to make a team or our team, so you're not trying to do a whole lot that's going to 
uh, you know, put them behind the eight ball. But I think at the end of the day, you've got to give them the best opportunity to show you what they have and, and, and how they go about their business. And uh, fortunately, it's been a, a great camp. We've got a, a great battle going in a couple places. Uh, catching wise, you have Susac, Bandy, and, and Pena that are all having a great camp. You've got young players, Brinson and Cordell, outfielders that have shown what they can do uh, under stress. And again, hitting in the big leagues is not easy. I think that these guys understand that, but you're getting a chance to see what they can do at this level so that if by chance something happens along the way during the season and you need somebody that they're already prepared for it and ready to go. You don't only have just the young players. You have the veteran players, Eric Thames. Here's a guy who's come over from Korea. How has your approach been with him? It's, it's a little different, I'm sure. He's, he's experienced, he's been here before, but, but still, it's been a little bit of time. How has your approach been with Eric? Well, just getting an understanding of how uh, he goes about his business, how he wants his batting practice, his, his early work routines. Uh, plus, he's been his own hitting coach for the most part for the last three years in Korea. So you're trying to get a feel for uh, how he likes to uh, look at things as far as perspective pitching wise and then try and, and give him an understanding of how he's going to be pitched here. And again, let him go out and do it. I think uh, a lot of it is, uh, you know, you go out, you watch, you see. I give him a little information. Uh, he goes and steps in the batter's box. Now everybody has a cutter, so he's got to figure that out, how guys are going to pitch him. And I think that uh, it's going to go a long way to helping him long term. And, and we've got a left-handed presence with him and Travis Shaw hitting either in front of or behind Bronny. And uh, there is no person on the face of this earth that's happier that Bronny didn't get traded because with him in the middle of our lineup, right. uh, it kind of settles thing. And uh, he's been a great leader uh, since he's, you know, since camp started. He, he's playing in his second game today, and obviously the double that he hit was rather loud. But I think that uh, him and his calming presence, our lineup, it, it goes a long way to helping these young guys get better quick. You know, you talk about the hitting approach, and, you know, you go through so many things mechanically, but, boy, that mental approach has to be just so important that you use with the, with these players. Well, I think mentally you've just got to understand what teams are trying to do, how they're trying to get you out, especially with runners in scoring position. Are they going to go soft? Are they going to go hard in? Um, are they going to give you a pitch to hit? Who's, been, who's hitting behind you? So there's a lot of variables that go into it, but at the end of the day, it's all about getting a good pitch to hit. It's understanding situations that, that come about because you could have a run on first and no outs, and then two pitches later he's on third, and now the situation changes. So you've got to be able to understand situations from pitch to pitch, understand yourself as a hitter, but evaluate the situation uh, under stress. But I think that uh, at the end of the day, these guys have got a distinct understanding of how we want our offense to run. We are passing the baton. We are grinding out ABs. We are uh, not, not swinging at pitches down. We're not chasing down. So that's the new DCD, don't chase down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love it, love that, it. That we've come yeah. up with. But, at, you know, you've still got to fight and battle because our division's tough. You got the Cubs, you got the Cardinals, you got the Pirates. Now, these teams have great pitching, and we've got to fi figure out ways to scratch out runs uh, so that it gives our pitchers the best chance to be successful by tacking on runs each and every inning. You know, Darnell, last year you guys made such great strides in, uh, you know, drawing walks, being patient at the plate. And uh, is that, was that a mantra that you were kind of bringing to your team every single day, or is that more of a... Re uh, reflection of the type of hitter that you have and second part of that do you have something along those lines that you're preaching to your players as a group this year well I think you always want to be comfortable when you're talking to your players about getting a good pitch to hit and making sure that we're not swinging at pitches that are on the edges now based on that uh, you know going into spring training you have those conversations with guys and now they're a little more patient and now we turned to a team that walked a lot but we also struck out a lot I think that uh, we've cut those strikeouts down this spring compared to, to last year. I think that uh, there's a, a different group of hitters, a, a young athletic group uh, with a lot of teachable moments. But at the end of the day, it still allows us the opportunity to uh, do damage, especially in counts that we create by taking those questionable pitches. These guys, it, it's a great group. It's been a great camp. Counts has done a great job. Eddie has done a phenomenal job as far as scheduling and getting us all in the right places. Now it's just a matter of our guys just getting 
in position to to do damage especially offensively but you're trying to in the short term make sure that these guys stay focused on what we're trying to do but the long term is that this is a spring training that's a week longer so you're trying to keep them challenged every day and motivated so that when we do play our games that we're seeing the best of of what they got in their a swings on a daily basis yeah well apparently you're, you've gotten through to a couple of guys i know that uh, domingo santana is on fire right now what have you been working with with domingo because Boy, he looks as good as he ever has with this team. Well, he still has his patience at the at the plate, but we're trying to to give him an opportunity to be aggressive, at least more aggressive in, in hitters' counts. I think that uh, that by moving him off the plate, I think we move him off the plate two or three inches. That allows him to cover the outside without actually having to uh, cheat on the inner half. So, I think that so far so good. It's worked. I think that we. We uh, we do have uh, you know challenges ahead just based on the fact that uh, you can revert back to some of the things that you did in the past. But so far so good, it's working. You know you've had an idea about some of the players that have, were coming in, some of the veterans that have come in. But how much have these young players surprised you with their approach and adapting to what you want them to do? Well, I, I don't think there's any surprises as talented a group as this is. I think that. You know, when you're sitting down and you're having conversations and you try and figure out the exact, uh, you know, baseball IQ of some of these guys, they're, they're, they're pretty smart. I think they have a pretty good idea of what they're doing. But I, but I think uh, most importantly, it allows us to do our job daily. The routines are a lot cleaner, a lot crisper, and allows us to to uh, take the, the A swing into the game a lot more often. Thank you, Darnell. I appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the way, and looking forward to watching you guys swing the bats. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate it. All right. We'll, uh, we'll come back after this pitching change. have runners at first and second with one out. Matt Garza reached his pitch limit and that'll bring on John Ogzak from the minor leagues. One of those just in case guys and you figure he's going to be asked to finish this third inning. Yeah last year pitch at Brevard County he had pitched in 38 games. He was one in three with a 3.04 ERA and 10 saves. Well, he got an out right there on a stolen base. Good throw by Jet Bandy. So he's thrown out a couple of base runners here in this inning. Now you see his numbers in A ball last year. Good numbers. 304 earned run average. Only allowed three home runs in 56 in the third innings. You know, these guys in the minors that you get to really get that opportunity to come up and pitch in big leagues in the come in these situations. These are these experiences are invaluable to these young people. Do you remember your first big league uh, appearance in spring training? Uh, yes, I do. I was very nervous. How'd you do? Uh, I pitched a uh, one and two thirds innings. I mean, were you on the spring training roster or did you come up for the minor league? Actually, to be honest with you, uh, my first spring training that I went to was a major league spring training. I never went to a minor league spring oh, training. Oh, is that right? Wow. Uh, and I got hurt the first day. Had to have knee surgery. And then by the end of the season, I was in the big league. So 
I was wow. coming out of the big leagues and going to Major League Spring Training. Fast rise for Jerry Augustine. I got lucky. At 10 years in the bigs. Snap throw to second. Yeah, ten, was, ten years in the big leagues. I mean, look look up his numbers, folks. I mean, good uh, good career, gr very good career, and uh, ten years no at bats. Well, uh, DH, I know, but they saw me hitting the minors, Rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, two outs, a three-one pitch, and outside ball four. So Dickerson draws a walk. So the fourth walk issued by Brewers pitching. Garza walked three. And now Ogzak walks Dickerson here in the third. So first and second, two outs, all tied at one. And that'll bring up Hunter Renfro. Yeah, it just seemed like Garza in that last thing tried to be too fine with his pitches. Got behind and, you know, you, you get a little bit tired, you try to overthrow a little bit and just got this pitch count up a little bit and couldn't execute his pitches. A pinch hit for a strike. He was around 50 pitches, maybe a little bit, a little bit more. But uh, I think that uh, Craig Council will be pleased with that. He worked the, the, his, all of his pitches pretty well. And here's Renfro's pitch right on the inside corner again, 0-2. And, and you know, like in spring training, you know, we're getting into the third start now. You want to get him in that that 50 to 60 pitch category and you want and you know when you get there you're just it's a new you haven't done it in a while it's going to take a little bit of time Ooh, got him O2 pitch tried to come up and in and Renfro very fortunate I'm not sure where it got him but he's all right check it out well, he wanted it up he got it up but look like he hit him in the hand or the wrist area somewhere fortunate that didn't get him in the head Tough to get out of the way of that one. That went up. Got him in the elbow pad, perhaps. Yeah, trying to throw a fastball up in the strike zone to elevate the ball a little bit, and the ball got away from him. So that loads the bases for Franchi Cordero, the center fielder. Have you met a more positive guy than Darnell Coles in your days in baseball? No, I have not. This is, uh, you know, he comes to the park every day. He has a a program and an idea of what he wants to accomplish and I think he he's done that from over the years of coaching and understanding what it takes to hit in the big leagues he's a good big league baseball player himself and uh, uh, really pulls for these guys he's got a good program yeah good routine he's a lot like you I don't think he's ever had a bad day he, he might have had a bad day but you don't show it well, you don't show it right no. why, why do that right yeah why a, I try not to I have bad days we all do but you don't we you would never more know than it, you think looking at you <laughs> <laughs> more than you think Eddie's not had too many bad days either we're going to talk to him in the top of the fourth we hope so Darnell Coles Ed Cedar there's a good off-speed pitch for a strike Eddie was excited when you told him we we're going to talk to him in the fourth this morning he told me it's about time we've been down here three weeks and you haven't had me on yet that's right he can't believe it one of the good guys in all of baseball. Oh, these coaches, they work spring training. Dawn to dusk down here. You know, Rock, I came early to do interviews uh, for Fox early, and uh, we did a lot of interviews, but then I had the opportunity to go out to practice, and Eddie Cedar is a guy who orchestrates their practices. Mm -hmm. He's what in a, charge of spring training. What a great job. I'll tell you what, the work and just about going after it each and every time. He really did an outstanding job. There's no standing around. Everybody got to work in. Another walk. Cordero walks. That'll be an RBI. A run is in. Padres up two to one. So four walks and a hit batter in the inning. There's only been two hits. Jet Bandy's thrown out a couple of would-be base stealers, or this inning would be much worse. Tyler Cravey getting loose in the Brewers' bullpen. You know, it's a case of a young pitcher coming in and you know he's been out there before been never been on the big league level and you, you get out there you try to throw the ball too much you try to that ball that he that he threw up and in hit the batter with just trying to overthrow you got to stay within yourself and that's the hardest thing to do yeah I, for I remember, a young pitcher. I remember getting called from the minor league complex you know back in the old days went to Sun City and uh -huh. and caught part of a game and it's like an out-of-body experience sometimes I, I, was, it is. I caught Raleigh fingers and <laughs> You know, you got, you know, Ben Ogilvy and Robin and all those guys around. I mean, it's very intimidating for a young guy. It you is. Know? And it really is. It's like you don't even feel your 
you, your feet on the ground hardly. It's uh, something these guys have been dreaming about their whole lives. So you got to give them a mulligan when it's the first time out. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I got to ask you, how was it catching Raleigh? You put your glove there. And, did he ever miss it? No, he didn't. He threw oh. the uh, the fork ball. Yeah, that was it. Those were in the days. Even in spring training, he threw two innings. You know, I mean, those guys. I never forget. I was sitting in a bullpen, Raleigh, and I asked him. I said, Raleigh, where do you throw a three-zero pitch? I throw it right down the middle. Sure enough, he gets in the game that night. Goes three-zero. Three pitches on the black outside corner. Yeah, that's the middle, right? Man, that's that's the middle plate for Raleigh. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. Well, one ball, one strike to the catcher, Luis Torrens. So one run on three hits, four walks for the Padres have got them the lead right here. Four of them in this inning. Five overall. And a two ball, one strike pitch up and in. So having a difficult time is Old, old Zach. Well, it's the hardest thing to do when you're out there in the position that he is right now is to slow yourself down as we saw DJ go out there try to just settle him down I don't think he was trying to tell him a whole lot just relax him and settle him down and that's what he's trying to do and it's a tough thing to do for a young pitcher you can see right there he walks another hitter what happens there you can tell him coming to plate flying open with that front shoulder back arm is dragging a little bit and those things happen. Yep, and here comes Craig Council, so I think the day is over for Olczak. We saw Tyler Cravey getting loose down in the Brewers' bullpen, and that's going to be it for the young right-hander. Well, the Padres have a 3-1 to -one lead with two outs, and the base is still loaded. And we'll be back to introduce Tyler Cravey in a couple of seconds. baseball like never before with access to one-of-a-kind experiences such as movie night on the field batting practice sessions and much more visit brewers.com slash ticket plans to learn more well done movie night a lot of stuff going on at the ballpark oh. even when the team's not around the brewers do a great job yep. Tyler Cravey on for the fifth time already this spring having a good spring right, bases loaded two outs first pitch down low for a ball Cravey last year you can see his numbers 20 appearances two starts had a really good you know time with the Brewers last year certainly making a pitch to make this ball club fouled straight back Ortega Rafael Ortega at the plate you know we talk about adjustments and in Tyler Cravey's one of those guys that really has made some adjustments was up a little bit gone back and up and down with the Brewers last year went down did some changes with his delivery right now you see him always pitching from a stretch he'll pitch from a stretch what does that do for you well it just makes it it's more consistent in what she's doing and he said he'd go from a windup and for one or two pitches then be back into uh, a stretched uh, position but he says it's a lot more comfortable and he feels a lot more comfortable doing it he's that sinker ball type got to keep the ball down and uh, it's really helped him a lot and yeah, we've seen Tyler Cravey 
for parts of the season each of the last two seasons remember he uh, was a starter was 0 and 8 he did not have a very good time of That's it right. but pitched a little bit better than the 0 and 8 record back in 2015. Ortega swings and fouls it over the third base dugout. He's even gone as far as he'll give you some different looks when there's nobody on base. He might quick pitch you a little bit, a little bit changing deliveries from the stretch. So uh, he's changed himself around, got a little bit consist more consistent delivery so he can be more consistent. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded for the Padres. They already have three runs in here in the third. Swinging a ground ball to Yadiel Rivera. This should do it over to first. And that's it. So Cravey comes in, strands the bases loaded, but the Padres put three on the board. They're up three to one. Garza was done for the game started to walk out of the dugout council called him back Jerry what do you think they were talking about well just uh, I think Craig wants to know how he felt what he thought he was the, the how he felt that inning where he felt he got out of whack a little bit he walked a couple guys I think didn't have the good command that he showed the first two innings and I think it's a part where you, you talk about Craig council the manager trying to trying to build a rapport with him mm -hmm. trying to find out a little bit more about what makes Matt Garza tick well, at the top of the order for the Brewers in the bottom of the third inning, Broxton, Thames, and Braun. As Trevor Cahill works in his third inning of work, you got to believe that the Brewers really want Garza in that rotation to have that veteran presence, right? A guy that these young pitchers can look up to, and it's awfully difficult for a guy like Garza to do that if he's in the bullpen. You're exactly right, Rock. And, you know, you look at a veteran, you know, you look at Junior Guerra and you, you look at Zach Davies and the, and the style of pitches they are, and they're doing an excellent job. There's no, no question about it. But having that presence of a veteran who can understand and relate to them, I think, is so important. And this is a big year for Matt. You mm -hmm. know, like you said, he's got to earn that job. But as you're earning that job, it's still they need that, that veteran uh, person in that uh, starting rotation to help. A yeah, contract year for Matt, right? Last year of a four-year deal with the Brewers. That's right. I think he may have an option for 2018. I'm not sure, but this is a big year for him. Mm -hmm. Well, two balls, no strikes to Keon Broxton. Yeah, pitch in for a strike. Look, took a little bit off. Cahill, after having a difficult time with his command in the first inning, has been able to calm things down quite a bit. There's a line drive foul down the third baseline. Seemed like second inning, about the middle of the inning, he started finding that breaking ball and that they executing that change up down in the zone strike zone well, and it's made a little bit of a difference for Cahill. Yeah, that uh, that double play that he that he threw, uh, Sogard grounded into that one six three double That's play. Right. I think uh, got him back on track. Yeah, swinging a chopper behind home plate. It's amazing how little things can make a change. You know, yeah. you get a. Start off, you got runners on first and second, nobody out, and all of a sudden, 
one big play gets you turned around and gets you focused a little bit better. It's amazing yeah. how your defense can pick you up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Gets you back in the flow, calm you down a little bit. Two balls, two strikes. Here it is, grounded foul. Well, that's one thing we've seen at the Brewers with the Brewers so far in spring training. And we talk about, we're going to be talking to Eddie Cedar, but how well it's been run. They have been stressing defense. They have to get better on the defense side of the ball. So uh, it's good to see the defense can really pick you up and help mm -hmm. the pitching staff. You see Broxton holding the hands at the belt. Here comes the pitch. A line drive foul again. Boy, those hands are quick through the zone. It's amazing how an adjustment like that can make such a difference. I'm not sure if it's you, know, you talk to Keon about that. It's just as much confidence as it is mechanics. And I think Darnell Coles will back you up on that. Yeah, it, it's just it's so much quicker. You know, there's not a lot of movement. Before you saw him, he had a he had his held the hands held high as the wall hit the third baseman. Throws him over the first for the out, but it, it just seems like you know the hands were held high. There's a lot of movement, Rock. You know, as a hitter, boy, more movement you have and approach the ball, harder to get to the ball. Now it's short and quick. No, it does. I mean, he throws his hands more at the ball as opposed to swing with the body, so he's not pulling off the baseball. Uh huh. And when he started to do that, his third time with the team, he started drive balls into the gap out in right center. I think that's what you notice more than anything, how he mm -hmm. hit the ball hard the opposite way. Throwing the hands at the baseball, doing a good job making that adjustment, and it could very well resurrect his career. Well, if there's, there's any indication so far what he's done, uh, it's definitely headed in that direction, isn't right. it? Yep, Eric Thames up. He walked his first time up and scored a run on the Braun double. And breaking pitch down. One ball, one strike to Eric Thames. Talking to Thames, uh, you know, breaking ball league over in Korea, and his big concern is, you know, getting used to the big fastballs over here in the U.S. A little chopper to second base, Sardinius up with it, and throws over to Myers for the out. Hey, you go over to, you know, play baseball, you know, Pacific Rim, and I guess in general you could say as a, as a generality that they don't throw as hard, so you go over there, you have a lot of success, you hit home runs, and now all of a sudden you come back here and they're throwing mid 90s. That's a big adjustment. Oh, it has to be. You know, you get a, you, get, you learn how to make that adjustment to the breaking ball, staying back, and we saw right there the ball is on the inside part of the plate and got a little bit jumpy and kind of tied himself up a little bit. You talk so much about staying inside that ball. That is so important. I think that's a big adjustment that he's going to have, and any hitter right. is going to have. Yep, Ryan Braun up. He doubled his first time up. Gave the Brewers a one and nothing lead. Darnell was telling or saying how much Thames was glad that they kept Braun around. I think that anybody in Milwaukee that's a baseball fan could say that too. That's right. <laughs> I know for us, it's a lot of fun to have Braun in that lineup every day. Oh my God! You put him in the in the middle of that lineup, it just changes changes confidence about everything you do. That curveball in for a strike. Braun, he thought it was inside. Don't remember as many curveballs from Trevor Cahill no, in the past. It's been it was fastball change, right? That's right. But he's flipping a lot of curveballs up there today. Not a lot on him, but they're throwing. He's throwing them for strikes. One and two to Braun, down and away. Two well, and two. You know the one thing you're thinking, Rock. You know he comes over to San Diego. San Diego is really revamping their whole starting staff. Mm -hmm. He might get that opportunity to become a starter, and that may be something he's looking at now. Before we used used to see that. Maybe a little bit hard slider with a change up and fastball. Now you're getting that big breaking ball included. Not the guy with a you know veteran presence in that starting rotation. That's always important. No matter how young most of your starters are, it's good to have that veteran that can uh, bring them along. And that's I think what the Brewers are hoping out of Matt Garza. The three-two pitch to Braun, swing and a miss, strike three. And pitch down, a little sink on it, so. A three up, three down inning for Trevor Cahill. We head to the fourth.
to one lead. And hey, Brewers, you can stream games live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go all season long. Download the app and take Fox Sports Wisconsin and Brewers baseball wherever you go. And we got a new left fielder in the game. Day's over for Ryan Braun. He was one for two with an RBI. Brett Phillips takes over in left. And speaking of outfield, we have the Brewers third base coach, director of outfield operations, and uh, in charge of putting together the Brewers spring training, Ed Cedar. Eddie, how things going today? Very good. How's it going up there? Real good. Yeah, it's uh, kind of different. You know, we don't have B.A. We have three play-by-play -play guys that work on Fox Sports Wisconsin. None of them are here, so me and Augie are trying to uh, push through here. Well, I'm sure you're holding down the fort because you both have been plenty rested. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, are you trying to say we haven't wor worked in a week? You know, what? we were just talking about it. I mean, you know, I had to go, you know, from the commercial. They do exist when you guys showed up at the park today. <laughs> so give us a general sense, Eddie, how spring training has gone. It's an extra long spring training. How do you guys have to adjust being it's so long this year? Uh, I have to adjust. DJ, who does a great job, has, probably has the biggest adjustment to make, you know, making sure the pitchers, we don't want to rush them too quickly or, you know, hold them back too much. And then plus you got to get pitchers ready for the WBC Classic and stuff like that. So DJ, who did an outstanding job, is the, probably under the most um, to change up things. Us with the position players, we just, you know, take it easy on them at the beginning and once again trying to get the WBC guys ready. How does the process start for you? I mean, Craig Council has charged you with putting together spring training, putting together the schedule uh, each and every day. I mean, when do you start putting that schedule together and does it change throughout spring every now and again? Oh yeah, it changes. Um, Craig has an idea. Him and Murph come up with plans on what they want done that day and then I go through them and then I'll go to DJ and see what he wants done and then I'll go to every defensive um, department and go see what they want done and then I put it all together and hopefully it comes out well. You know, the spring training so far, I, I got down here early and I got to come out and watch. Short and quick, but to the point and really stressing defense. It seemed like that's one thing that you, you're you doing this year. Uh, it was well done, but how do you do that? Put, getting guys in the right position and being able to, to get cover everything you want to do in the time that you do. Oh yeah, they do. Uh, the coaching staff does an outstanding job of making sure everything goes smoothly. Uh, if you ever come out to the backfields, there's tons of early work happening where there's infielders getting ground balls. There's fly ball to Brox. Ooh, had a little trouble with the sun, but pulls it in. There you That's go. There you go, Eddie. You know what? Next thing, I'm going to coach third. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Eddie. Uh, but then, then, you know, we get it all together. There's lots of work, extra defensive stuff always going on on the backfields. Like I said, the infielders are out doing their thing. The catchers are doing their thing. Uh, there's stuff going on in the video rooms. And, yeah, and then when we get out, we have our plan. We have all-inclusive defense where Murph runs that. And he has them doing all kinds of things that will happen in a game at a fast pace. So, you know, they got to be on their toes. Uh, they do a pretty good job. You have to be excited about the young outfielders you have so far in spring training, and they have really been impressive. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, you come out today, we had the machine out doing wall drills, robbing homers, uh, had them on the ground doing little rollovers, getting up, catching one ball, and having to find the other one. Uh, very, uh, very athletic out there and a great group to work with. Eddie, when is your, when does the coach's day start? Walk us through. What time do you get to the ballpark? Uh, Basically, what time do you end up getting home? Get here probably approximately 6, 6.15-ish. Um, start getting my schedule. The schedule's already done the night before, but then I wait for Counts and Murph get in. Well, Murph's already here, but Counts gets in, and then we have a little meeting, 6.30, make sure everything's good. Uh, post the schedules and then go around and explain what's going on. Then we have our meeting. Then we have our team meeting. Uh, like I said, there's early work going on. And then by the end of the day, I'm doing the next day's schedule and getting that posted where it needs to be posted. And we usually leave here probably about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. That's a, so basically what you're saying is at the start of the season, you guys get a bit of a break, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but we know coming in, it's a big grind, you know, and Council does a good job, and we do the 
you know, sometimes it's a show and go where we don't get to the park until like tomorrow. We, uh, Clubhouse actually doesn't even open till nine. Uh, players really love that. And, uh, the staff really, really loves it. You know, coaching third base, I mean, you've been doing that quite some time now. In spring training, you have new players like Thames. You have Shaw. Do you, you kind of see and stretch the limits with those guys when you're trying to wave them around to, you know, the bases to see what they can do and what they're capable of doing on the bases? Oh, exactly. Especially in game situations. You know, we put them through. We, as part of our conditioning, we do a lot of that on the bases. So you get to see it in a non, you know, non-game type energy and stuff like that. And then... Yeah, the new guys, I'll try and push them a little bit and see exactly what they can do, what kind of cuts they make at, fir at third. Um, how are they going first to third? Are they good on the two-strike, two-out swing and breaking out? And, uh, yeah, I try, try to challenge them so they know in the season that, hey, you're coming around to third. Don't expect to be stopping. Yeah, one more question before we let you go. The most important question, how's Squirt doing, your dog? Squirt's doing good. <laughs> I hope we had to... <laughs> It's sad that you brought that. We had to send them home early because Marsha's driving back with the parents. They were worried about getting, you know, not having a hotel that takes pets. And uh, so Squirt went home with Nicole, who's taking great care of them. Hi, Nicole. Little <laughs> shutout for you. Every night she's supposed to send me Squirt pics because, you know, Squirt and I are buds. See, Squirt, normally Squirt and Rupert, my uh, miniature dachshund, they usually they kind of like have a thing on the plane back home after spring training. Now we don't get to do that. No. It's kind of a bummer. Poor Rupert. Uh-huh. Rupert's going to be bummed out. I'll bring him some snacks or something, though. Eddie, thanks a lot. Good luck the rest of the way, and uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you got to be pleased with the way things have gone so far. Yep, so far so good, and I really hope to see you guys soon. Yeah, we got a busy week next week, so you'll be uh, seeing quite a bit of us. <laughs> Sounds great, Thanks, you guys. Eddie. All Appreciate it. Eddie Cedar, what a guy. One of the best in all of baseball, no question. Well, we got a 2-2 two -two count, two outs, and a man at first base for the Padres. Tyler Cravey still working. Will Myers at the plate. <laughs> Cordova taking his lead, uh, swinging a pop-up foul over the third base dugout. I'd say the one thing you know, notice about these coaches once you get to know them, high, high energy. Absolutely. And that's the one thing Craig Council really likes about this coaching crew, crew is the fact that throughout the course of the long season, and in particular the course of a very long spring training, it keeps these guys engaged. You know, Pat Murphy doing pregame drills today, screaming and yelling, having a good time. That's what he's talking about, trying to keep things, shake things up and keep it fun. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, in, the, in number one, they're educators. They teach the game. And they're trying to teach what they want to get the execution down. And uh, they're creative, and they go about it in a real positive way. Uh, you Very seldom do you walk around here, do you ever hear negative comments? It's all about what can you do to get better. And when you got a young team like this, and you want to make that change, you want to get to the level you want to get to, it starts with education and making these players understand what you want to have to accomplish the things to to get to the postseason play. Uh, Ed Cedar begins his 11th season as a ground ball to third base. That's going to end the inning. So thank you to Ed Cedar. Nothing across for the Padres. We head to the bottom of the fourth. 3-1 Padres.
greater Milwaukee area to create a video with a positive message designed to help strike out bullying. The winning entry will get a grand prize, which includes a visit from a Brewers player, as well as tickets and the opportunity to throw out a ceremonial first pitch. The contest runs until April 21st. For more details and to submit an entry, go to brewers.com slash beyond the diamond. Good work done by the Brewers Community Foundation. Cecilia Gore in charge of that operation. There's no bullying going on there, is there? A little bit. Brother, sister. Yeah, all in good fun. Well, Trevor Cahill continues here. His fourth inning of work. It'll be Travis Shaw, Santana, and Aguilar here for the Brewers in the fourth. First pitch down and away. Curveball. A lot of curveballs for Trevor Cahill. Mike Brewer coaching staff have they have an awful lot of fun together. They have fun with the coaches. They're always joking around when the time is right for that. And they get down to business when they have to do that as well. But just good natured, good teachers. And that's what's important with a team that's in a rebuilding mode. Yeah, swinging a dribbler over to third base, first base dugout. You know, it's also a nice rock. When you need something and you want to ask them a question about something, they're so willing to talk to you and, you know, help you understand where they're, type of, where they're trying to go in, in different situations and the way they're approaching things. Uh, that's one of the things about this making this job fun is that you get to talk to them and you have a better understanding of what this club is trying to do. 3 1 pitch to Shaw, swinging a dribbler over by the on deck circle from Milwaukee. Hope to talk to Travis Shaw when he's done for the day. Came over from the Boston Red Sox in a Thornburg deal in the beginning of December this year, this offseason. Pitch on its way, fouled off. Still good moving for Trevor Cahill. His pitch count. At 62, so good long stretch for him today, Augie. Stretching him out. That's what you want to do with your starters. See if you got a guy who's in a having a good outing, is in a good uh, flow of things, just let him go a little longer. And ground ball in the gap, I should say. <laughs> it's kind of a needle in a haystack right there. Threads a needle into right field for a base hit on a full count, a 3 2 pitch. They had this shift on. They had Sardinius way back in the short right field, but he's able to. Find the hole out there. This straight up stance. Nice level swing. I'm going into my analyst mode. I apologize. No, but that's perfect. You do it. No one does it better than he's you. He's got uh, good balance and looks like they're going to go to a pinch runner. That's going to end the day for Trevor Cahill. Uh, good long day, day's work for Cahill. And we'll be back to introduce the Padres pitcher when we come back. Late than never, he was supposed to start, but he's picking up Trevor Cahill today. 
A guy that looks like he's going to be in that Padres rotation. At least he has a pretty good shot. Yes, he is. The last came over in June, he was claimed on waivers from the Marlins and made 12 starts and had a 3.67 ERA and really made an impact on his Padres staff late in the season. Yep, kind of a sinker slider type guy. Good ground ball pitcher. And nobody out in the four for the Brewers. They're down by a couple of runs. A Travis Shaw base hit to start it off. And he still is in the game. Not taken out. He was going to the dugout during the pitching change. One ball, no strikes inside. To Domingo Santana. And Santana ground out to third his first time up. As Darnell Coles had mentioned, they, you know, Santana off the plate a little bit. Uh, not so much crowding the plate, able to get to that pitch inside where they seem to pitch him quite a bit. But still able with those quick hands uh, to get to that outside corner. Uh, he's a guy that really does well when he can hit the ball. He's a gap-to-gap -gap guy. Hit the ball on the outside part of the plate, drive that in the gap, and standing off the plate, he still can extend out and hit the ball the opposite way. Fast balling for a strike. Remember Ryan Braun when he had that thumb issue got off the plate a little bit. He's That's always right. been a terrific hitter on anything close to the outside part of the plate. Ryan Braun and Domingo Santana has been driving the ball to right field extremely well as of late. Just like Braun. There's the pitch swung on and fouled. Santana one of a long list of big tall multi-tooled outfielders the Brewers have in their system right now. And the fact that there are so many young ones is perhaps putting a little bit more motivation in the game of Santana right now in spring training. Well, you see where these young players have come on, stepped in, and the way not only that they play defense, but swing the bat has been impressive. So Santana draws a walk, so two on, nobody out. And a lot of base on balls in this game. Brewers have drawn three walks. The Padres have six. I believe it's six, yes. Seven. But yeah, the base on balls. Jesus Aguilar with nobody out. It's just a matter, I think, Jerry, if Aguilar, if he does, in fact, stick with the ball club, it's going to be a challenge for Craig Council to get him enough at bats to keep him sharp. That is that is a challenge because he's pretty one-dimensional. He's already at first, he, first base. He's mainly a first baseman. He's, how much is he going to get to play in a week? And the, the big things are the at bats. And But, you know, the one thing, the way Craig has been able to, he's been able to utilize players real well. Mm -hmm. I think if you watch the way he's bandaged, especially his first full season last year, really utilized his players very well and they got their at bats. So it'll be interesting with Aguilar, with the power that he has, what they do with him. It'll be interesting to see what the Brewers bench is going to look like this year. That's right. Now the 1 0 pitch to Aguilar. First and second, nobody out. Swung on and hit deep to left. No chance for this one to stay in the ballpark. That's what we're talking about right there, Jerry. A quick strike for the Brewers. Luis Aguilar with a big fly to left. A three-run shot giving the Brewers a 4-3 to three lead. Right there, he got that fastball on the inside part of the plate and put a good quick swing straight on the inside of the ball. He was able to drive it out of the ballpark. And we talked about power. It doesn't take much for this guy. To put a swing on the ball, they hit the ball out of the ballpark. And they have him listed at 6'3, 250 pounds. Here we have the fastball on the inside part of the plate, trying to get in off the plate. Short and quick to the inside part of the ball, staying inside that ball, drives out of the ballpark. See Real good swing on that ball. See how close those hands stay to the body. That's the only way you're able to get the barrel of the bat on that pitch in. So a three run shot by Aguilar on cue as Jet Bandy steps in the box. One of some impressive players this spring in this camp. Brewers have to be very pleased with the way where they're at right now. Yep, he's off to a pretty good start. 10 for 24 and with power. One guy that can, you type of guy that you can bring in a ball game, he can change the complexion of a game in a hurry. 
Jeff Bandy off to a good start with the, with the bat. And swung on and fouled straight back. I guess the bat plays in, in the major leagues when you talk about the three catchers. Pena, Susak, Bandy. I guess whoever is the guy that's going to hit the most is probably going to play because very similar defensively. All. When you look at them all behind the plate, very similar in what they do. It's going to be interesting to see how they look and the approach they're going to have. Not only some of these guys, Pena probably knows the pitching staff a little better, but when you look at Susak and, and Brandy, these are guys who are trying to fight for a job and at the same time learn that pitching staff. Yeah, Susak really came into camp in great shape this yes, year. Yes, he did. I mean, he uh, looks good. A lot of the guys, I guess that's what you have to do these days. It's very competitive in spring training. 3-1 pitch, curveball lifted high in the left field. This is going to stay in the ballpark. High sky out there in left. Ortega shields his eyes and makes the catch. I think that's one thing that's been impressive by the organization that relating to these players and trying to trying to build the future for this ball club is, you know, there are no limits. You come in, you make your own limits. Mm -hmm. And they, most of the players came in ready to go. And that's impressive. We go out to watch them practice. It was... It was actually entertaining to watch because they were on the move, getting the job done that they needed to do, and they did it on a on a real time element basis where they got their work done. Was that the way it was when you were early on in your big league career? Guys came to camp in really good shape, or was it more or less like the old days where you know they come in and they start playing leapfrog? You see the videos in the old <laughs> they're That's doing right. leapfrog and you know jumping jacks and stuff like that, an opportunity for guys to get in shape, but. That's right. How was it in your first few years in spring training? Just very different, very different than what you see today. Um, you know, back there we come out and you do that. You still do the the, the drills you do uh, that they do today, but it was you know all in one group and and it seemed like when you did your workouts, it was at the end of practice. As at the end of practice, mm -hmm. now these guys come in. They're here at six o'clock in the morning. As we can see, a base hit up the middle. Uh, they're here at six in the morning doing their workouts before practice. Yeah, that's the one thing you notice. You know, after a pitcher leaves the game, back not that long ago, you'd see that's him right. running the outfield. You don't see much of that. No. Anymore because of what you're saying. I mean, these guys do a lot of work beforehand. They'll go up into the clubhouse. They'll hit the treadmill. They'll hit the bike. Things like that. So they don't necessarily. It's not that they're not doing that stuff. You just don't see it. Well, and they all have their own program too. You know, you see they every every starter has this certain style or certain routine, and they stay to it. And Sogard running on the pitch, but fouled off from Yadiel Rivera. Check out the boots. You got a pair of boots like that? Augie, you're an Arizona resident part-time. I don't have any like that. Do they have spikes on the bottom of them? <laughs> oh, no. New sheriff in town. Wow. Michael Reed. There you go. <laughs> it's a good look. That might be his routine. Yeah, on him. Owen won to Rivera with one out. Brewers already have three in here in the fourth. Sogard takes off. Breaking pitch. Here's the throw. And too late, a stolen base for Sogard. Torrens throw a little bit late. Had a good jump did Sogard. I think the fact that Clemens threw a curveball is what allowed Sogard to steal it. Because it was a good throw by Torrens. See that loopy curveball, good throw, but just a little bit late, a head first slide by Sogard. Picking the right pitch to run on is very important. Sogard got a good jump on the ball. You know who's good at that? Molitor. I mean, it's almost as if he knew what they were throwing. It was amazing when you saw him leading off and Robin betting second how they ran the bases. Yeah, ground ball to third. Only play for Cordoba's at first base. So two outs. That'll bring up the top of the Brewers batting order, Keon Broxton. I think when you talk about guys like Paul and Robin and the way they hit at the beginning of the lineup, followed by Coopy, is a lot of real good baseball instincts mm -hmm. on the bases. Smart. Not only, you know, talented, athletic, can do a lot of things, but students of the game. Yes. You know, they spend as much time looking at that stuff. Of course, they, how would those guys respond, do you think, to the scouting reports and the stuff that they have now for players to look at? It's amazing. It's amazing if they had the things that they have today, 
what change it would be. You know, I can remember Cecil Cooper watching a lot of film, but it was not film. It was film that they had taken through him from the, the first half of the year. I remember one year, and uh, he was hitting like 260 at, mm -hmm. at the break, and he was frustrated, and I walked in, and he was watching film. So I sat down, and we were watching, and he says, Oh, yeah, I'm doing something wrong. I can't figure it out. And looking at his head, I don't know much about hitting. All I know is I'm trying to get you out. <laughs> and uh, we sat there and watched it together. And he said, watch this. And I watched it. And we sat and we talked about it. He went on a tear in the second half. I think he ended up hitting like 320. But that's you see what that mm -hmm. does to those players back then. What could they do with this stuff they have today? That was the old uh, VCR tapes. That's right. Everybody had a VCR tape. Yeah. And uh, they look at their at-bats. But they really... The, the technology didn't exist where they could see, you know, pitching that they're going to be facing that day. I mean, it's amazing the system, you know, that Major League Baseball incorporates. It's uh, it's mind-boggling. I, I would say that a lot of those guys probably wouldn't pay much attention to a lot of that. You're right. Back then. You're right. Sometimes there's too much of it. Pickoff attempt. Oh, looked like he had him out, but uh, safe at second base. You think they'd go to review on that? They would have. That was close. You know, Rocky, look at it from a hitter standpoint, what a change it's made. But it also makes a big difference from a pitcher standpoint. Nice, what a nice quick throw. move by Paul. Boy, Boy a close is play. He safe? Yep, he's out. Oh, he's, he's safe. Well, yeah. he just got in. Good play. Good move there by Clemens. Yeah, curveball inside. But it, it really helps both sides because your pitchers go in, they watch as much as anybody. Just to, you know, I, I think they go in to get that, that, Reaffirm into how they're going to pitch the ball, but still seeing the opponents, seeing mm -hmm. what they do against them in the past is big. Yeah. Tendencies. Can you predict what a guy's going to throw? That's what that video does for you. And a 3 -0, 2 0 pitch in for a strike. Yeah, pregame meetings are a little bit different today than they were back then, huh, Rock? Remember we used to sit in that office at County Stadium and you'd go through the Kansas City lineup. How do you pitch George Brett? Hope he hits it at somebody. There wasn't a whole lot of that, no. uh, you know. No, there wasn't. Just thought you just did what you did before. You thought you had success, and sometimes when you get behind him, you just yeah. throw it down the middle, hope they hit it at somebody. Up and in, down and away, right? That's what it was. <laughs> High and tight, low and away. Times have changed. Keon Broxton has the count in his favor. Three and one. Two outs, a man at second. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Good pitch on the outside corner. You know, we talked about Calvin Coolidge, Julius Caesar, Tuscahoma, McClish a little bit ago. He made a comment to me uh, after my first year, and I became a starter. He says, now, Aug, I want to tell you something. In order to win, you better pitch in. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If you got any doubt, just go down and out. <laughs> <laughs> what a great guy. Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. Well, curveball on a 3-2 bid. Looked like a pretty wow. good pitch. It looked like Clemens was going to walk into the dugout. But up high, so Keon Broxton draws a walk. Well, Clemens thought he had the third out at second base on a pickoff. He thought he had... Broxton looking at the curveball that time. You know, one thing you've noticed, uh, and you see it a lot, Rock, is the way Keon Broxton, his approach at the plate, not only by dropping a hands and being quicker to the ball hasn't made a difference. Boy, his approach, the way he approaches each pitch and how he's more patient right. at the plate has really changed. Well, a lot of players are swing early in counts. They don't want to get the two strikes because that panic sets in with two strikes. I went through it. I think sure. a lot of guys have gone through it. We don't see that in him anymore. No. He's very relaxed at the plate, even with two strikes. Then I'll bring up Eric Thames, uh, first and second. Brett Phillips on deck. Remember, he took over Ryan Braun. strike to Eric Thames. 3-3-1 three, three and one for the Padres. 4-4-0 four, four and oh for Milwaukee. The big blow, a Aguilar three-run home run in this inning here in the fourth. Another pickoff attempt. And Sogard able to get him back safely. 
trying to keep the runner close, especially when you have a little bit of a shift on. If you make a good throw there, get in behind him because you're playing right behind second base. Sometimes you can you yeah. can get him. They made that close play before. Just can't get as big a lead at second base with a guy behind like that. Even that secondary lead's got to be a bit shorter. Yeah. I can remember when I went over to Orioles for a spring training. Cal McClish. Uh, Cal McClish. Cal Ripken at short. Every time I went in the game, he said, anytime there's a guy on base, we are going to throw to second. We're going to try to pick him off. Mm -hmm. Be ready for it. Just so happened that spring, I had a lot of guys on second, so I was doing it quite a bit. <laughs> Just one of those springs. But it was interesting. He says... Reason he wanted to do it, he says he wants you to get used to looking back and mm -hmm. just, you know, one of those players, you know, Calvin, you know, Ripken, Cal Ripken, and Robin Yount, those type guys, Dale Swain, those guys, always looking for something to get an edge. Yep, trying to help out the pitcher, keep him close. He might not get the out, but you keep him close enough, he might not score. There's a breaking pitch that's in for a called strike. That's a three run inning for Milwaukee. Well, they take a four to three lead as we head to the fifth. Aguilar three-run home run in the fourth as Jacob Barnes continues for Milwaukee. We've seen Garza, Cravey, and now Jacob Barnes. And making his third appearance this spring. He's pitched two innings and gave up just one hit. No walks and two strikeouts. Last year with Milwaukee appeared in 27 games at a 2.7 ERA. Had one save. Hard thrower with a slider. A slider they called a cutter. You can call it whatever you want. It was a slider in my book, but... Very effective. Always that nice to have a big arm out in that bullpen. Barnes certainly has that. Yeah, one correction. Oldzak pitched between Garza and Cravey. Don't want to forget about him. So fourth pitcher for Milwaukee as Alex Dickerson gets a an at bat. And fly ball into center field. Incoming in is Broxton, not able to get there. So a base hit for Wilkerson. So Wilkerson a walk and a base hit. How about some of the rules that uh, Major League Baseball has announced for at least rule modifications going into 2017? Your thoughts on some of these? I certainly have some thoughts on them, but uh, interesting uh, things that they're looking at. Yeah, a couple of the, the, the no pitch intentional walk has been one that's been talked a lot about they think it's going to speed up the game. It's very interesting. There's some pros and cons either, either way. Uh, I think the challenge play is something that the change there is where you've been very much vocal yeah. about it and had some good thoughts about it. But some interesting things like coaching at third base and, and the pitcher with the delivery. Uh, and the pitcher's delivery mainly has to go with the delivery that he does either a, a stretch delivery or a windup from this that looks the same. Yeah, those guys, you know, not so much Jimmy Nelson, but guys that have their back foot on the rubber like That's they right. would be in a stretch. They have that really reduced and modified delivery. They have to, like, tell the umpire what they're going to be doing, what they're going to be using. The base hit 
for Hunter Renfro who's having a good day at the plate. But uh, the two minute time limit on the replays, I love that. I think that that is a great, great rule. Yeah, it's, I think it's something that they, they've had to shorten up. It, right. You know, they've had some that, but you see a lot of them go longer than that. Now they've got to make a decision. I think that's going to be good for baseball automatically. And if a manager has exhausted all his challenges in a game, you know, the umpires can use their discretion. Now it's the eighth inning, not the seventh. Seventh inning. So it goes one inning beyond what it was last year, the last couple of years. Then the last rule here, is that the Eddie Cedar rule? <laughs> where the <laughs> coaches have to stay in the box? Yeah, they can't creep in like where Glenn Hoffman is right now, right? Yeah, they've got to stay in the box. They can't move closer to the runner. Third base coach uh, has to be behind that front line, that line that's toward home plate, but going to have to give Glenn Hoffman a bit of a uh, refresher course on that rule. That's the one that they don't want. That's the one they're changing. Yeah, they're saying that you have to be inside the box until it's pitched, until right. the pitch is pitched, then you can move. Right. So kind of interesting to see what they're going to do with the coaches. Surprised the umpires aren't saying something, though. I mean, you would think that spring training would be a time with the umpires to remind these guys that you know, this is uh, different this year. We don't want you in there. I think it's more or less for safety as right. much as anything else. Oh, I agree. I agree. So first and second for San Diego. And Jacob Barnes on the mound. Nobody out. Yeah, slider down in the zone. Yeah, you know all the work that goes in by the third base coaches. They're looking at angles just like everybody else. And you see Eddie moves a lot. He goes up and down and moving around. They want to know the angle so when they have to make a decision whether to send a run or not, they they know they're they're making that right decision. What do you think about, you know, a guy walks up there first, you know, second and third, one out, and you just say, you know, take first and you don't have the, the four pitches. You know, I'm not in. I don't like that. I don't either. I like it's part of the game that you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, someone's going to find the edge somewhere. You you lob the ball. They're going to steal a base or something's going to happen. I and, you know, as often as we, we see it, we don't see it a lot. So it, I I think they're trying to speed the game up, make it look a little bit different. Right. Uh, this one's an interesting. Yeah. That is an interesting one. We'll see how it all works out. Man, slider down. One hop row to Thames. Throws his second. A little bit late over to first base. So Brewers trying to turn the difficult double play, the three to six to one double play, but they do get the lead out, or I should say the out at second base. So double play still in order. First and third and one out. And that is exactly what they were working on when we walked in this morning. Mm -hmm. They were working on that double plays and getting that pitcher over there to cover the base. I'm going to bring up the catcher. Luis Torrens. And Barnes was really going along well last year. Brewers ended up putting him on the disabled list for a little while. And uh, they like him. They like he's got electric stuff that slatters as good as any. And he throws hard. Nice to have that hard thrower down in the bullpen. Brewers don't have many of them. Nope. Yeah, he's one of those guys that he's got potential to be a closer at one time or not. But, but it's all about getting that good command. He's got that good fastball and like you call it the slider and when he's on with that slider it's got some really good till it's sharp uh, it's a real good pitch uh, Cordero at first taking his lead bluffs a steal attempt to second base pitch down and away 2-0 Now, when you look at the Brewers' bullpen right now, you got Naftali Feliz. Pretty good chance he's going to be the closer. He's got the experience. You got Carlos Torres, who had a terrific season. There's the 1 0 from Barnes, swung on and fouled off. You Corey could. Knable. Yep. Got Blazik. Jacob Barnes. Now, let's take a look at uh, Augie. Walk us through Barnes' delivery. Well, he's, he comes back and he gets that bounce and then the one thing that you see he has a little bit of a breakdown on his back half of his body sometimes when you do that you push you push off and it, it can cause you not to get over the top like you want I think when you look at him he's got a real compact delivery but it really comes in with him getting to that balance point and being able to get over the top when you break down that back half sometimes it can get tough when he's off you can see he'll carry the ball a little bit with him it'll be off the plate a little bit that's max effort isn't it Yes, I mean, it is. Pushing off that back leg. Yes, it is. 
A lot of times they teach nowadays to stay tall on that backside, mm -hmm. and it really works out well with him. He gets a lot of drive off that back. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Boy, you have to be patient to keep your body back so you can get over the top and extend to the plate. Don't they say you use that uh, lower half more? It takes the pressure off the uh, shoulder and elbow, right? Absolutely. The old Tom Seaver delivery. One ball, one strike, one out. Brewers up four to three here in the fifth. And usually a lot of times they say when you break down like that, you don't have the good breaking ball. And I'm going to tell you what, Tom Seaver had a pretty good breaking ball. <laughs> right. I remember facing Tom Seaver in that uh, that 25 inning game at uh, Comiskey. At Comiskey? Yeah. You know, you go through your career, Rock, rock and you, you think about now that you get to look back and you, you think about some of the players you faced. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of push off and we're taking a look at Jacob Barnes right there and you got a lot of push off like that, but it's all about getting that front that top half over that front side so you can throw it. But as I was talking, some of the players that you face. Yeah, you know, cool. Tom Seaver. You think back. Yeah, wow, Tom Nolan Seaver, Ryan. Tom Seaver had that dirt patch on his knee. He actually yeah. did hit the ground. A ground ball foul along the first baseline. Did you catch Nolan? Did Nolan Ryan when you were in California? No, well, no I did not catch. No, yeah. no, I didn't. That was I, I faced Nolan. When did you hit Nolan Ryan? When he was with I had two hits off Nolan. Don't tell wow. him that. <laughs> I have told the story a hundred times, and B.A. makes me tell it all the time. But <laughs> I hit a double off Nolan to break up a shutout in the ninth inning. I, I literally, I was second. I thought he was coming out to beat me up. Oh, is that right? He had that look in his face. You know how that look <laughs> that look he gets in his face? Yeah, I do. It's the first time I think I ever hit a double and was ready to apologize to the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> two and two. That's a called strike three. So the first uh, second out of the inning. Torrance called out on a strike. So that's what he needed. He needed the strikeout. Man at third, less than two. There are certain guys when they pitch, and Nolan is one of them, boy, when he's on the, on the mound. It was just... It was all about work and in and things you how you had to approach a game and what you had to do to win the ball game. There was not a more intimidating and I faced Clemens I faced Randy Johnson you know some of the most you yeah. know most intimidating guys. Yeah. You know in my year but uh, there wasn't one anywhere close to Nolan Ryan. He was something else. I say Bob Gibson was like that. I hope we have Yuke over here. Yeah. And his seven might ask him about that. Fly ball into right, right center. Broxton going back. He's on his horse and able to make the catch. So there's that long strides for Keon Broxton, able to get Barnes out of a jam. First two reach, nothing across. He heads to the bottom of the fifth. Brewers up by a run. Well, nice day here at the ballpark. Not a cloud in the sky. Temperatures touching near 90 degrees today. And on the eve, I should say, in a couple of hours, few hours, we're going to have daylight savings time. So, folks in Milwaukee, push your clocks ahead an hour. Did you do it in the morning or at night before you went to bed? I did it in the morning. Did you do it in the morning? Yeah, I always did it in the morning. 
Well, Brett Phillips sends one into uh, center field, way back out there in center, and Cordero able to haul it in. So that one gave it a pretty good ride for Brent Phillips. Well, he's still young, a lot of ability. Came over in that Carlos Gomez deal with the Houston Astros a couple of years ago, and battled through injuries last year. Yeah, and I was in spring. I was always an hour late rocking, and fall I was always an hour early. So <laughs> <laughs> better late than never. Yeah, you got that right. Good swing there by Phillips. Yeah, Phillips can swing it. A lot of guys. Well, that's going to bring up Travis Shaw. Show the base hit his last time up. He was on base when Aguilar hit that three-run homer. Two balls, no strikes to the Brewers' third baseman. So we're going to line drive into right. What the shift is going to get him this time. Sardinius way out into short right field, able to haul it in. So there's that shift getting him. Boy, you have to like his swing rock. Staying back on it. Picks up that footstep, stays nice and balanced. Keeps the bat back. Down through the ball. Uh, Donar Coles always talks about guys with the high leg kick. Got to make sure that leg is down, that foot's down before you swing. It's exactly what he did there. Domingo Santana with two outs. Would you say he's quiet at the plate, Rock? Oh, yeah. Very quiet, don't you Upper think? Upper body, very quiet. Uh, should, you know, you got that big high leg kick. I mean, you know, there's two kinds of hitters. You know, you have... You know, guys that have a little bit of movement with the top half. You have guys with a little bit of movement with the bottom half. You can't have movement with both. That's right. You never see that. You don't see a guy in the big legs that moves around that much unless he has the open stance and uh, brings that foot across. But uh, we'll see. And Santana, you would say, is very quiet up there at the plate. Upper half, lower half. It's amazing. They talk the same thing in pitching, too. You got the guys like Jacob Barnes, who's more of that duck and drive or that lower half. And then you got other pitchers that stand tall and it's that upper half that go. Mm -hmm. A lot of similarities. Yeah. yeah. The fundamentals of hitting and pitching. I mean, it sounds crazy, but when you talk about balance yeah. and uh, loading up, uh, it's very similar. I mean, when it, when you're a hitter, you have to get into you, you get into your triggering mechanism, and you have a pause between you start before you start to home to to the pitch, and it's very it's the same thing with a pitcher. That's right, absolutely. Got to have that balance point on the back foot, right? Got to stay back and make sure you get your arm in good position that you get over that front side so you can throw the ball where you want to get that arm in good position. Full count to Domingo Santana. Curveball, check swing, or I should say foul tip into the glove of Torn. So a quick inning for Clemens. We head to the sixth. It was up by a, by a run.
Uh, we appreciate uh, Travis Shaw sticking around after his good day of work. So, Travis, uh, talk about your first couple of weeks, week so, here with the Brewers. Uh, just trying to adjust to a new organization. Uh, been with Boston my whole career and uh, learning everybody's names the first couple weeks, kind of how everything goes about over here. And uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun so far. And, and I'm looking forward to getting the season started. I guess uh, what went through your mind on uh, in uh, early December when you were told that you were traded for Tyler Thornburg and you were heading to Milwaukee? What did you know about the Brewers at that time? I, I didn't know anything about the Brewers. I'd never played them. Any of the, any of the any of the teammates uh, in the minor leagues never played them there. And also, I mean, we we had never played the National League Central and interleague play, so I uh, I knew nothing nothing about the Brewers. And your impressions right now I think uh, spring training is going well you got to be impressed with uh, a lot of the young athletic talent that this organization has built up over the last couple of years oh yes and uh, I didn't like I said I didn't know anything about it and then coming in here and seeing how how young this team is and also uh, how many top prospects they have and everybody's performing well so far in spring training and uh, the next couple of years could be pretty exciting up in up in Milwaukee you know Travis you come over here and there you know Right away, you find out right away they're looking to solidify that that third base position, get some left-handed hitting in the, in the lineup. How does it? How do you approach this spring? Is it any different than what you how you've done it in the past? Uh, not for me. I mean, you don't want to go into spring training thinking you have a spot given to you, and uh, that's not the way I approach this spring. And uh, kind of like. I mean, you want to make a good first impression. Uh, nobody really knows me over here. The coaching staff doesn't know me. So uh, this spring, I wanted to make a good impression, kind of show what I can do. And uh, the first couple of weeks have gone pretty well. I uh, started off kind of slow, but uh, I feel like the last week and a half, I've, I've gotten to a pretty good rhythm at the plate. You've been Ameri playing America League with Boston. Now you're over in the National League. Any difference there that you feel? It's hard to tell in spring training. I mean, I know it's going to be a completely different game during the regular season, but uh, National League Baseball, I've heard, is way different than American, especially the American League East, where it's just whoever hits the most home runs wins. So, uh, yeah, there'll be a little bit of adjustment uh, game-wise. Don't be fooled. The games are not shorter over here in the National League. I, I, was, I was hoping for that. Yeah, this game today is a good point of it. But the super season for you last year, and, of course, we're going to have a very quick inning. But uh, anyway, good luck, Travis. Thanks for sticking around. We look forward to watching you throughout the season. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Travis Shaw, ladies and gentlemen. That was a quick inning. We head to the seventh, or I should say the bottom of the sixth. This. Is do come to spring training. Keep keep up with the crew wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the official app of the Milwaukee Brewers, featuring live broadcasts, scoring updates, and breaking news, and much more. Download at bat today, free for your smartphone or tablet. Brought one today. The brought one. Brought one. It's my yes, favorite. Yes, he did. Well, bottom of the sixth inning here at Maryville. Brewers up by a run. And Luis Aguilar, the designated hitter. 
He's got a walk and a three run home run today. Another good day at the ballpark. Jesus Aguilar, my mistake. One for one. Curve ball down for a ball. One ball, one strike to Aguilar. Jesus Aguilar. I won't make that mistake again. We're going to drive in the right field. A base hit for Aguilar. Boy, this kid can hit. Wow. He has some kind of quick bat. One hop bullet in the right. You know, Rocky, talk about staying back on the ball, letting the ball travel. Look what Aguilar does right here. Let's the ball get back in the zone and puts a nice swing on it, hits the ball the opposite way for a base hit. Really nice approach, good swing on the ball. And that'll bring up Michael Reed. Just got into the ball game. Brewers trying to tack on here after losing a couple of games yesterday in the split squad. Broke their six game winning streak. Come into play with an eight and seven record. Hope to have Bob Euchre next inning. I talked to Euchre before the game and he said he'd come over and that chat with us about uh, his career and what he sees in the Brewers. That will be fun. There's no doubt. Always oh, great to see you at the ballpark. Working today on radio, along with Jeff Levering. Two balls, no strikes to Michael Reed. Swinging a foul ball along the right field side. Gonna have room? Nope. In the Brewers' dugout and the bull bullpen. Michael Reed didn't doesn't have his uh, cowboy boots on. Took him off. Probably feels he doesn't have. Cleats on the bottom, I guess. <laughs> That's just a different look. A yeah. different look. Yeah. It's okay for stretch. That's all right. Part of his routine. Might not be acceptable in the batter's box. And the one thing you see with Michael Reed and a lot of these Brewers hitters, they're wearing that extra protective uh, piece covering their, their jaw and their face. It's something something relatively new. And swing a drive in the right. Sending back the right field of Renfro. He's under it and makes the catch. Fighting the sun a little bit, so the first out in the inning. Just an additional protective guard. Uh, the Rollings uh, company that makes the helmets have offered to supply that into each and each one of the helmets for the guys that want to try them out. Doesn't mean they're going to use them for the regular season, just get a feel for it. Michael Reed uses it. Yadiel Rivera has it. He's in the on deck circle. You know, VR uses it on both sides. Yeah. Broxton's been using it, so just some extra protection. If it gives you confidence to hang in there on that inside corner, why not, right? That's right. Always safety. You know, pitches up and in, you can get a little afraid of the ball gets away from a pitcher, and it does happen from time to time. It does happen. I would imagine it really doesn't affect your vision too much. No, especially when they have it down low the way it is. Mm -hmm. Eric Sogard does not use it. Here's the 0 1, a line drive into center. Little looper in front of the center fielder, Cordero. So the Brewers able to get a couple of runners on with one out. So Sogard with another base hit. He's got two today. We're going to have a pinch runner for Eric Sogard. Who do we have? 93. Who do we got, Beth? Isan Diaz. Isan Diaz running for Eric Sogard. So you figure Diaz is going to take over his shortstop. One out. Curveball in for a strike. Diaz, the minor league player of the year. Players. Right, yeah. Last year. We interviewed him on our air last year in September. Good kid. Another very talented middle infielder that the Brewers have. Uh, Pista Rivera swung on a miss, another breaking pitch.
Well, one ball, two strikes to Yadiel Rivera, who's getting a steady diet of curveballs in his at bat. You know, Rock, this is a part of the game that's real testy for me because I can't keep score like you can. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, here. well, you got Rivera, you got, remember, you got Ursig on deck. He oh, is at first. Goodness. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed another breaking pitch. So two outs. Well, let's check out our Fox Sports Wisconsin upcoming schedule for the Brewers. That doesn't mean all these games are on television. Our next television game is right here against the Diamondbacks. You know who's going to be doing that game? Craig Kishan, a real play-by-play -play guy, is going to be in town. One of the best. You can check out the other games either on the Brewers radio network or on MLB.com. I will be doing the color that day. Right back in your seat. Unless you want to do it. Well, you're doing a heck of a job. Well, I'm having fun. I'm with the best. It's easy. Ursig <laughs> has had an interesting week. Had a grand slam, a two home run game in Goodyear. Earlier in the spring, he had a walk off base hit in the 10th inning, or I should say at the bottom of the ninth inning here at Maryvale. Good young hitter. Have you seen him up in uh, Appleton? I didn't get to see him last year. Uh, I didn't get up there to, to see any games. I followed him, but I didn't get to see him. But we got to interview him uh, early in spring training. He's a nice young man and uh, really is happy that he can focus on coming every day and playing baseball and not have to open up the books of study when he was in college. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of us like that, Augie. <laughs> a nice play over at first base. Pitcher over Clemens to cover, and that'll end the inning. So a nice play to end the sixth. For Milwaukee. Hey, we head to the seventh. Brewers up by a run. We we'll hope to see Mr. Bob Uecker over in the booth. His day here in the West Valley in Phoenix. Brewers up by a run. And 2017 giveaways are on deck for the Brewers. You got five off fan giveaways. You got kids' days, eight promotional days for the first 20,000 fans. And Brewers always have deals at the ballpark, whether you have ticket deals or you come to the ballpark and have giveaways when you get to the ballpark. So the 2017 giveaway schedule is out. Check out your Brewers media guide or your Brewers schedule. As Andrew Barbosa takes over for the Brewers in the top of the seventh. Last season in the minors, he was 3-0 with a 1-5-1 ERA. Today, he's making his fourth appearance. He's pitched two and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs. And the first pitch in from Barbosa, a strike. And uh, we are pleased and honored to have the voice of the Brewers. <laughs> Bob Euchre here. Euchre, how you doing? Good, Rocky. Yeah, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? I think things have been uh, a bit testy. You know, that's you got, okay. I'm, I'm sitting in a kind of a different, uncomfortable seat. Me and all you trying to grind through this one. Will Myers with a drive off the wall in center, picked up in in center field by Wren. And he's got to keep going. Cooper with a throw to third, and that's going to be an easy out. 
Kind of an ill-advised effort there, you. What yeah, do you think? Uh, uh, he was good till he got to second. <laughs> when he got in there, I liked it a lot. <laughs> but we'll take it, right? Absolutely. Anytime we can get out. Are you kidding? That ball was well hit, though. Yeah, Will Myers. Yeah, why would he do that? Yeah, one of the few veterans uh, on this ball club. Mm -hmm. Not a very good decision. Good job by Cooper, the first baseman, to back it up and make the added third. But your thoughts? You've seen this team, uh, you know, down here in yeah, spring. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Jeff and I were just talking over on on the radio side about, you know, spring training and what we do each and every. We've all been through it. Mm -hmm. And all the people that have been here, and I apologize for my frogginess. I got a little... Throat issue, not bad. I was walking down the street the other day, and a guy just walked up and karate chopped me in the throat. Uh, <laughs> so you'll get over it then. Yeah, right? um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll be okay. Um, but we've all been through this stuff, Rock. You know, we all come to spring training. Augie, you've, you've done it. With what happens out here, and you got the Brewers had 58 guys in camp, right? The Padres brought a whole bunch of people today. So if you bring them, <laughs> you might as well play them, right? You don't want to right, yeah. haul Get the guys all over the place. And Makes it interesting, though, doesn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, I like it. Christian Betancourt is uh, pinch hitting. There's a good pitch by Barbosa. But you got to be impressed with this young talent. I mean, you obviously, I mean, understand. You've been around here as long as this team's been around. But uh, have, you, have you ever seen so much young athletic talent? No, Rocky, you're right. Um, you know, in watching Kean Broxton and Lewis Brinson, Aguilar. I mean, the guys that, you know, they brought to camp and are getting a chance to show their wares, like this guy right here, Barbosa. Yep. yep. Um, you, fans have to understand that it's going to, you know, be a while, right? Right. Um, but eventually, the bottom line for the Brewers and ownership and everybody else is to get back to championship type play. You we, know, don't, you, we don't know how long that takes. Right. I mean, everybody's different. But the thing is, I think the thing that helps in this we build process is the organization honest with the fans, saying this is what we're doing. It seems like uh, they might be a little bit ahead of schedule. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, and, and the other thing... The other thing, talking... We were talking on, on radio about this just a couple of minutes ago. The amount of guys today, Rock, that are throwing in the upper 90s and beyond. I mean, in another five to 10 years, I think 105 and 107 miles an hour is going right. to be the norm. It's amazing, isn't it? And that old adage, look for the fastball and hit the curve, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that used to really make me laugh. Look for the fastball and hit the curve. You can't do oh, both. Oh, really? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> now, you did pretty well against Drysdale, right? Well, Drysdale and Koufax. Koufax, yeah. Yeah, but Johnny Roseboro was telling me what's coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you stick around another half? Yes, we just started. Absolutely. I don't get a gift otherwise. Yeah, quick inning for Barbosa. <laughs> Brewers up by a run. We head to the bottom of the seventh.
up with National Alliance on Mental Illness and the commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness. Learn more about how to be stigma-free and visit spot foxsportssupports.com. And we're with Bob Euchre here in the seventh inning. Uh, another beautiful day in, yeah. the, in, the, in the valley. A lot going on around here. Oh, this is great out here. It really is. I mean... And the weather, weather coming up for the next 10 days or so, Rock's going to be in the 90s. Augie, yeah. It's, it's, How long have you been out here? I mean, part-time. Well, I, I was out here. I came out here October, and then, you know, I went back and forth a few times. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, now, since we're, I can't, matter of fact, your fantasy camp deal, right, I was right, out right. here for that. Right. Robin Yount and I did a commercial out here at the ballpark, and when we got in there to do the spot, I looked around at all those lockers and uniforms and said, Boy, they talked about making changes. This is, <laughs> this is unbelievable. It's a, it's God. Where's Brawny, right? I, 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 I didn't see anything in the paper about right. that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You know, you can, they talk about spring training. We were talking earlier how now spring training, players are here at 6 o'clock in the morning going to a workhouse. A little bit different from when you played, wasn't oh, it? Oh, uh, unbelievable, Augie. Um, this one's going to wind up foul and out of play. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, to be invited to spring training was always a big deal, right? Right. Just, and you had peanuts, uh, chips, and maybe a soda. Mm -hmm. You know, that was it. Today, the breakfast that they serve to all the players in all the parks is totally mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. It really is. Not that it's bad. Um... But yep. I, I, you know, it, it's a different era today from when I played. I mean, you know, going, we used, we started, when I first started playing, we were using clubs. Nobody had a bat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. You made your own too, right? Yeah, you did, yeah. And the uniforms you wore, when you slid, you really hurt your legs because there was nothing there, you know, it's just bare skin. That, that, that was kind of tough. You know, we were at, we were talking earlier about, you know, nowadays in spring training, guys come down here in shape. I mean, you see some of these guys, the shape That's that they're the difference. in. That's the I mean, when did, back in your day, I mean, did, mm -hmm. guys came down to get in shape, more or less, well, right? Well, we all, we all had winter jobs, Rock. Right, right. Right? Right. So, I mean, you had to work. Um, you know, you're making... Fly ball into center field. Going back on it is center field up. Makes the Kez battling the sun of a midway through the to the warning track. You know, you this play by play stuff's a lot of work. You're doing okay. What are you worried about? I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot more work than I have to go through normally. <laughs> Quit writing stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know who's up. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing that too. Yeah, there's a nice catch out there. The sun field out here in center can be. A bit challenging. Andy Green on his way out. This might uh, be the end of the day for Clemens, and it is. We'll take a break, and we'll find out who's pitching for San Diego when we come back.
Zach Davies finding a rhythm in spring training. I'd say he's been outstanding. Travis Shaw tweets. Check out his tweets and the latest Packers free agent news. You, will you, you tweet? No, I don't. You know, <laughs> I, I have a bird at home that does that. <laughs> Craig Stamen, I, I imagine, tweets. He's you know, on I'm, the I'm sure. I, I'm sure they do. I, uh, I, you know, I, I hear the doorbell and I think I go to my computer. You know? <laughs> Let's get back to that. Uh, you, you guys having jobs back. Oh in, yeah. In your well, day. I mean, what, is, I, what are some of the stuff that you used to do? Well, I, I worked uh, first federal savings and loan for a while. I worked construction. I worked the Milwaukee Police Department for three years. What did you do at the bank? Um, tried to take money out of it. It's <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else at that time. Uh, but. I enjoyed the job um, with the police department. I really did, working in the juvenile division and did that for three years along with, you know, another guy that did that, Phoenix Mantilla, huh. Don Pavletic. Um, but, yeah, we had to work at that time. Um, the minimum salary when I first came to the major leagues was 7500 Oh, my. And I was only getting 2500 uh, <laughs> which, you know, I took anything just to get here. Uh, and you had to have a... You got to have a job. Mm -hmm. Winter ball was nice at that time, mm -hmm. too, though. Rock. They paid well. Winter baseball played, and they paid better than they did at the major league level. Yeah, in Puerto Rico, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot about those days when uh, you guys had to work in oh, the offseason. It wasn't like it is today. No, for sure. Minimum salary is about, what, $550,000, 550000 or something like that, wow. yeah, in, in that area. Yeah, it was pretty nice. So that would have been nice back in the day, <laughs> huh? I'm telling you. How many years did you play winter ball? I played one year in Florida and one year in Puerto Rico. And then the next year, they gave me a ball, a glove, and a bat and told me to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Stamen works the count to three and two. Let's talk about some of these rule changes yeah. and some of these implementation. I don't like what it. Do you think of, what do you think of, uh, like, no, not throwing the four balls for an intentional that walk? One, that one really bugs me because I know you've seen it many times. Yeah. Pitchers, there's a lot of pitchers don't like to throw a ball four. You know, they don't like to give you an intentional mm -hmm. walk. And that, who's the guy with the Cubs? He, John Lester. Had right, trouble, right. You know, right. guys like that, I mean, every once in a while it happens, folks, where... Uh, a pitcher throws a wild pitch on a on a, a base on balls, a free ride, and a run scores. Right. I don't. I. I'm glad they didn't have like throw three strikes and don't swing. Right. Right. Because I would have been dead. You know. I, <laughs> now you can't swing when you go up there. <laughs> well, I was told to do that. But take three. <laughs> you might walk. I, I do like the two-minute time limit for the uh, replay. That's though. I think good. That's a great one. Yeah. That's the best one of the group right there. Well, now you can only you can get a you can get a review after the eighth inning, not the seventh. All right. That's good. Eric Cooper on. Phillips takes off. I mean, that's not even going to be close. Kick and run a little bit, you. Yeah, he's good. You know, he's got a chance. Um, whether it be this year or next, um, he's certainly got a chance. And I like him too. He's a good kid. I like him. But how many how many times do we see as you look at Brett Phillips? Got a big lead and the jump. Tough to throw that guy out. All right. Good throw too. Walking lead almost. Took off before pitcher but, took off to the home plate. Yeah, but but that review stuff last year. First, you know, you get a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. If you lose a challenge, you don't get any more challenges, right? Well, all you got to do is wait till the seventh. You can have a hundred reviews. Right, right. Went that, to the umpire. What, they never turned understand. them down, right? No. Umpires never said no. No. Right. Agreed. That's the one I can't understand. I, I don't understand that. And you know, all of these things are are meant to try and speed up the game, which is a good idea. Um, and we're not talking about spring training games because here you got, you know, everybody's got to. They got to play. You right. should play everybody. Do you remember your first spring training game? Were you? Did, did, was it like it is now, where minor league guys would come up and finish up games, or? Uh, not too much. Not like it is today, yeah. Rock. Guys played more more into the game. Yes, yeah. I I remember a game that I caught against the Boston Red Sox, and Ted Williams was was the hitter. That, I, that sticks out in my mind well. forever and ever and ever. Yeah, that. that 
You never really forget your first, even if it's spring training, your first game, <laughs> no, your you first don't. appearance. <laughs> right. We were talking about that, Augie and I, early on. Some of these guys, I mean, this is a big deal for these guys to come Absolutely. over here. To say nothing about the meal money they no, get. No, you bet. I'm I'm with you. They get the big league meal money. They get the oh, you know, play in front of great council. Happening. Yeah. You bet. Oh, the one-two pitch to Garrett Cooper down low. I remember Ted Williams turned around there. <laughs> you know, you're looking at him a while, Ted Williams. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm the catcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind you. <laughs> he thought I was giving balls to the umpire. I had, I, that, I had that moment with Yastrzemski. He was uh, up and I caught yes. in the first year. Yes, oh, yeah. man. Uh, I forget who the home player was. Bill Kunkel or somebody. Bill Kunkel? Balloon chest protector, and I held a pitch there. On, you know, it was like a 2-2 two -two pitch, and I held it there. And Yastrzemski kind of dropped his bat and looked at me like, what are you doing? If I don't swing at it, it's a strike. That's right. That's how Ted Williams was. You're right. You are right. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember Jocko Conlon, who's, mm -hmm. a, who's a Hall of Fame umpire. This I didn't say anything bad either. I mean, it's the first time I had ever caught a game that he worked. And I was batting, and we were playing down at Wrigley Field, and he called a pitch, a strike, that I thought was a bad pitch. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything bad. I just stepped out. I didn't even turn around. I said, I didn't think that was a strike. And he said, the next one is, too. <laughs> That's what he said. I said, oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they didn't have, uh, they didn't grade them back in those no. days. Anything could be a strike. <laughs> Anything, you're right. right. <laughs> be nice to the umpires. Oh, man. Out of 3 2 pitch to Cooper. Here it is. Swing a line drive into center right at Cordero in center. He makes the catch. All runners have to stay put. Yeah, that, when you, when you get that from an umpire, oh, you, you, you've been back there catching, you know, many, many times and, there's not, as long as you didn't turn around on an umpire, right. you know, as long as it didn't look like you were trying to embarrass him, you could pretty much say, you know, anything you wanted. Give you a long leash. Yeah. Right? I, I remember a, a, an umpire, Alex Salerno. And we used to get on each other all the time, but he used to, you know, he, how the umpires get down over you and mm -hmm. talk in your ear. All he used to keep telling me, you stink. You shouldn't even be here. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Rene Garcia, his first time up, taking over the catching duties for Jet Bandy. Going to be interesting, Uke, the catching situation here. they got three guys yep. that are pretty similar. You know, I guess we've been saying that the guy that I guess swings the bat is mm -hmm. going to get more of the playing time. I and, think you're right. But uh, all three pretty good backs. New ear in catching. No more Lucroy, Maldonado. It's going to be a big change. Totally different, Rock. Yep, you're right. And Garcia, base hit in the left field. Let's see if Phillips can score. He's got good wheels. And they're going to cut it off, and a two-out base hit by Rene Garcia. Now, that's a big deal for that kid. You betcha. A oh, base baby. hit in an RBI, <laughs> and the Brewers take a two-run lead. Yep. Here we see him staying back on the ball, gets a ball on the inside part of the plate, goes with it, drives it into left field. Phillips breaking on the swing and able to score. Yeah, Rock, that, that catching situation, you're right. Susak and Pena and Jet Bandy, yeah. Garcia. Right. It's a nice nice problem to have, though, isn't it? Yeah, and they got, uh, you know, Nottingham down in the minor leagues. He got yeah, sent I was a little down. disappointed. He got sent you know, down. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was a little disappointed. He's, He's banged a, up. He's got yeah. a bad shoulder. He's a great kid. I, You know, they, they've talked about possibly putting him in the outfield or at first base. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd really like to see him catch. I, I really would. You know, he's a big kid. He's got a good arm and power and everything else. But, you know, down the road we'll find out whether he catches or moves on. Hey, nice play behind home plate. Those aren't a lot of fun sometimes. No. I mean, you, you, you spike a fastball. You don't have much chance, right? You just throw something up and hope it no, hits you. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ryan Cordell, another one of those athletic outfielders that are in Brewers camp. Two outs, 1-0 pitch, ground ball over to first. 
He'll take it himself, and that'll end the inning. But the Brewers pick up a run. They head to the eighth. Thank you, See Mr. You Baseball. Later. Thanks, you. Really you appreciate Rocky. it, buddy. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Authority of the Milwaukee Brewers it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Any accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Jerry Augustine and the Milwaukee Brewers. <laughs> not really. You don't have to get Augie's permission. Oh He'll give it to you regardless. If you could only see this scorecard rock. If you could only see this pile of paper in front, I have a new appreciation for what BA and Matt LaPay and Kashan do because this is a train wreck up here with all the paper. We're pressing on, though. We're, we're yes, pushing we are. through yes, here. Yes, we are. And we got a lot of help on both sides of us. Appreciate all that help. This would be even worse. Barbosa continues here in the top of the eighth inning. And Cordero will lead it off for San Diego. And Barbosa had a quick inning in the seventh. Already in the eighth inning, Aug. We're moving along now. Yeah, pitch inside. Two balls, one strike. So you're having a tough time with your scorecard? Oh, boy. Is you, are you in a, about ready to give up on it? Just don't ask me some real pointed questions. Cousin. Like what happened in the third inning, stuff I, like that? Well, I can't tell you that. I can tell you that there were a lot of walks. That was about it. Yeah. Five walks and a hit batter. Yep, the two ball, two strike pitch from Barbosa. Here it is, swung, fouled off his foot. Let's go over the defense. We got Phillips in left. We got Wren in center. Michael Reed in right. Ursig, Dubon, Isan Diaz, and Garrett Cooper from third to first. And Rene Garcia behind home plate. Does that make sense? That's perfect. Is that what you have? That is exactly what I have. Swing a line drive up the middle. Nice play over there at shortstop. And I'll tell you, these guys, they can pick it. Mauricio Dubon, who has made a number of highlight plays already here in spring training. Do you see the one he made the other day, the jump throw to first? It's amazing. They have that kind of arm strength when you're near yeah, like that. Off your feet. And make it accurate. Right. I mean, it was right to the base. So Dubon, a relatively easy play for the plays that he's been making. Nice soft hands, knows exactly where he is and able to get the runner by half a step. Rocky Gale, the pinch hitter, he pops it up on the first pitch. Having a tough time with his son out there in center field is run, but he's able to haul it in for out number two. You know, Rocky, we talk about the great arms that these middle infielders have, but it's so amazing to watch their quick footwork there. It seems like they they feel the ball. They're always in good position to make a good firm throw, mm -hmm. accurate throw, and that's so important. Amazing, amazing athleticism. 
Javier Guerra, the new shortstop for San Diego. Barbosa's first pitch in for a strike on the outside corner. This is a guy that might have a chance at some point. Barbosa, that big tall left-hander, throws well, got a good arm. Fastball inside, one ball, one strike. Changes arm angles on different pitches. Is it true a guy like Barbosa, if he can get lefties out, he's going to have a job in the big leagues at some point? It could be because he changes arm angles. You get lefties out in big leagues, so important. Line drive out in the right field, and uh, Michael Reed makes the catch for a three-up, three-down inning for Barbosa. We head to the bottom of the eighth. The Brewers holding a th five to three lead. Uh, a couple of our new smokehouse items, uh, a Smoke Shack barbecue brisket, uh, a Smoke Shack barbecue pork. Both are smoked in-house. I'm about to throw a flop. I was just about to do I'm the same thing with the chips on there. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. That's it. Uh, we have a chicken tinga taco with avocado, radish, and a cilantro sauce. A little sriracha. Pretty good. good. Yeah, pretty good. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Our cheese curds this year will have the option to be tossed in either a ranch seasoning, a smoky, sweet and smoky rotisserie barbecue seasoning, or a sriracha seasoning. Wow. <laughs> Our new burgers are the Bomber Burger and our Milwaukee Burger, which has a uh, Schlitz onion and Newski's bacon for burger time. Yeah. So he got half the bun too. Oh, yeah. taste that. Mm. Hey, you know it's giving the slot. Let me make one more bite. Okay, good. Yeah. That's it. Lock that one in. I'm rocking with that one. Put that on the menu. Um, I think my favorite was the brisket. It's pulled pork. Pull. It's brisket. Pulled pork. It's pulled pork. Correction. <laughs> Correction. Pulled pork. Was Obviously, it was really that good. You didn't know what was. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was good. It was a pulled pork. I'm gonna go with that. Um, so use some barbecue sauce, and you're good to go. Well, I did like the burger very much. I really like the cheese curds. I really like the add-on, the dip, kind of the powdery dip that you uh, dip the curds in. Really nice touch. Uh, really good flavor. So that was my favorite. Wow. Where were we for that, Huggy? Wow. A nice uh, base hit by Michael Reed in the right field, or it's actually left center. Executive chef Seth Vanderland at Miller Park. I tell you, I can't wait to get to Miller Park to see the new setup they have in the concourses. I, the they say it's beverage. outstanding. Oh, I can't wait. But uh, why would they? Why would he run that right there <laughs> in a three already hour game? Aren't you starving? Yes, I am. I'm telling you, I would have taken all I know the, you are. I'd taken all the above right there. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. Seth takes pretty good care of us during the season. Bringing some stuff off to the booth. Isan Diaz, the second baseman, getting in that bat. 
And Brewers up five to three. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning, nobody out. Michael Reed at first base. Stammen still on the mound. Here's the pitch. Swing the ground ball to second base. Could be two. Easy double play for San Diego, 46 to three. Which one of those uh, food items caught your eye? All of them. They, I mean, they all look good. That was pretty funny. Keon didn't know the difference between brisket, brisket and pulled pork. pulled pork. That's okay. They, they could taste very similar. And they're both good. Yeah. But uh, Chef Vanderland, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he is a top-flight cook or chef, I should say. Has uh, all the accolades, all the awards, and he's going to be showing his wares this summer. There's a little looper in the right field, a little bobble out of the glove with the second baseman. That was Rondon, couldn't hold on. And that'll be a base hit. A base hit from Mauricio Dubon. Lucas Ersig getting in that bat. So two outs, one on. A little bit of a tough play. He actually turned to his right, right, and went back and misjudged a little bit and had to turn. Anytime you have to make that quick turn, especially with the sun, tough makes it a tough play. Yeah, especially down here, looking right up into that big sun. No that clouds right. to help you out. This is a high sky today. Yeah. And pitch the Ursig down low. There goes Dubon. He's going to be into second base, so he gets himself into scoring position. Good aggressive base running by Mauricio Dubon. I tell you, baseballs do not have to get away too far from the catcher. Balls in the dirt with this Brewers offense. I mean, these guys are always looking to take an extra base. Yeah. It's almost like you have a you have a little slogan: challenge yourself, find out what your your boundaries are, know what you have to do. Always be prepared to take that next base. And these are big at bats. These are big situations for these kids. They love it. So man at second. Brewers are already up by a couple. Ersig with a one ball, no strike count. And that curveball, foul tipped. He's got a nice, easy swing. He's kind of a throwback, Augie. No batting gloves, just kind of yep. hangs in there right on top of the plate. This is Goodyear. Early in the week, this was Monday. There's the grand slam, and that was a bomb up there above the pavilion out there and right. And the second was a line drive. This guy can hit a little bit. The ball just jumps off his bat. We got to interview him before, as his spring training was starting. He said that's a he's really going to concentrate on is being more patient at the plate mm -hmm. and looking at looking for the good pitches is the one thing he really wanted to work on. Yeah, he wants to be good defensively. That's his number one priority, but at the plate, be soft, take good pitches, good good pitches to hit, and then put a good swing on it. Yeah, he got drafted last year, and here he is in big league camp. And the 2-1 pitch, here it is, swinging a foul tip out in and out of the glove of the catcher. That's Gale behind home plate. You know, Rock, I think that's where you, you talk about the World Baseball Classic, where it's, it's, it's really made a difference in this spring training where the Brewers are allowed to bring up a lot of young players. You look at you look at what's in the field right now, the players that are in the field now, you have a 5-3 to three ball game, mm -hmm. and these guys are getting some great experience under a pressure situation. And you know Ursic wants to drive in that run. Absolutely. Yeah, good pitch. Foul tipped once again by Ursic. Look at a slider. Stammen throwing the ball pretty well. Padres have used three pitchers. Let's check it out. Not, sometimes you just can't tell if he fouls it. Who knows? Umpire hears it, can't see it too much. Full count. Good take on a tough pitch right there. Ball on the inside part of play, just missing inside corner. Nice and relaxed, no panic. 
Do you ever see a guy get drafted one year back in your day and end up playing in big league spring training? That's amazing. Yeah, they come up fast these days. Don't yes, they? they do if they get if they get an opportunity. Here's the full count. Down and in, ball four, so good at bat for Lucas Ersic. Well, he draws a walk, first and second, two outs. Stamen working himself into a bit of a bind. Kyle Wren coming to the plate. We're getting into the area or the time of the day here in Arizona where it's the hottest. It's right now 89 degrees. Wow, just beautiful. A little bit of a breeze to keep you cool. Just to, just to give you a false sense of security. That's right. Sit out there That's and get right. baked out in the sun. It is. Most of the stands here at the ballpark are in the shade. Still plenty of sunshine to be had out on the hills beyond the fences in the outfield. Here's a pitch to Wren, first and second, in for a strike. You know, I was talking to my wife last night. We were talking about Arizona. We we're talking Wisconsin. Your warmest part of the day is that that 12. Uh, here we see fans sitting out enjoying the sun. Where the temperature 12 to 1 is probably the warmest. Right. Out here it's 4 o'clock. 4 or 5 o'clock. Yeah, that's why they get off work early here. Curveball in for a strike. Got a big game on tonight. You're going to check it out tonight. The U.S. and the WBC playing the Dominican Republic. That's going to be a good game. The USA went on a walk-off. Adam Jones with last night. Yeah. Last night against Colombia. So check that out on MLB Network. Takes off. He's going to be out at third base. Well, Dubon, maybe a little bit aggressive, gets thrown out at third. That's going to end the inning, so nothing across from Milwaukee. We head to the ninth. Damian Magnifico going to close it out. Here at Maryvale, the Brewers holding a 5-3 lead. It looks as though Damian Magnifico is going to be asked to close this one out. We saw Magnifico last year with the Brewers. Good arm, hard thrower, Damian Magnifico. Yeah, last year was a Pacific Coast All-Star and had 18 saves and ranked fourth in the Pacific Coast League. He's making his fifth appearance, has pitched three and two-thirds innings, giving up three hits. Has walked three and struck out three. Now you see his numbers down in AAA. 52 games, a 406 earned run average. He was closing out games for Colorado Springs. Just a matter of whether he's going to be able to throw strikes. I mean, he's got the big arm, good movement, good breaking pitch, but sometimes he gets himself into trouble when he walks batters. You get the young pitcher. It's all about command and making that final taking that final step and really have confidence that you can throw your pitches and get ahead of hitters, especially when you work out of that bullpen. you got to pitch ahead. Yep. Jose Perella, the left fielder, is going to lead it off for San Diego. Right. 
We talked about the Brewers' bullpen. We got into it a little bit, but then, uh, you know, got Michael Blazik, who really never has a great spring, but always ends up turning on the switch when the season starts. He has four quality pitches. Yeah. Just seems like he struggles in spring, but when the season starts, that bell rings. He, it's a different pitcher. Yeah. You know, Rob Scahill is having a good spring. You got Jabba Chamberlain. Tyler Cravey. A veteran guy, right. You got uh, Brent Suter. They like him. Yep. So I guess there's some jobs to be had in the bullpen. There's utility job in the infield. You've got the catching situation to shake out and of course some spots in that starting rotation. So I think if you talk to Craig Council, you talk that's a good problem to have mm -hmm. what they where they are right now. You're looking at pitching starting staff seven to eight deep where they can go some pretty good young pitchers. Uh, Jorge Lopez, we haven't mentioned him. He's a, one of the good young pitchers that the Brewers have. But, you know, you look at that bullpen. It's all about throwing strikes and coming out. And it's going to be a little different this year. Yeah. You know, he's looking at his chops. Rick Sweet, the AAA manager, oh. he's figuring he's going to have a pretty good club to deal with. We talked to him this morning. He was smiling, wasn't he? Yes, he was. There's a breaking pitch by Magnifico upstairs. There's, you know, Rick Sweet. Triple A manager, he uh, has been involved in a couple of different organizations now, three of them now, that have went through rebuilding uh, situations. You know, Houston, Cincinnati, and That's now right. Milwaukee. And he said there's more talent right now in this organization than he remembers in those others. Yeah. Ground ball to second base. Up with it is Diaz, and Magnifico able to get the leadoff hitter. Yeah, you talk to him, and, and, and he takes it very seriously. Uh, he talks about that. As much as it is his job to prepare these guys for that next level physically, I'm going to tell you the mental process is so big, and he works very hard at it. Diego Goris, the uh, hitter for San Diego, the third baseman. I'm going to tell you, Rocky, it's impressive how you can pick up these names. Yeah, those, uh, there's Rick Sweet on the left. There he is. Funny guy to talk to, isn't he? You mean the pronunciations or knowing that they're coming up? Well, know who's the hitter and pronouncing it. Well, pronouncing it is a little bit of a challenge, but <laughs> we're getting a lot of help up here. I'm still back in the fourth trying to figure out what kind of changes they have. We got Beth, our stage director. We got uh, our stats man. These guys have been doing a heck of a job today, and we do appreciate it. Now, you mentioned the name Bill Brophy in Wisconsin. I'm going to tell you what. He knows it a lot. There's yeah. not too much that he doesn't know about sports. Bill Brophy, our stats man today. Beth Packman, and uh, they have they should get double pay according to a, uh, <laughs> that one gets a piece of Goris. Jose Rondon getting in at bat. Rondon, the second baseman. So tying run at the plate for San Diego. Damian Magnifico trying to close this one out. Ball down, not didn't scoot away too far from Garcia. You know, Damian Magnifico is kind of interesting with his delivery. He's one of those guys that throws way right over the top. You know, mm -hmm. comes over the top, comes right at you. He's got the good plus fastball and good breaking ball. Is it true as a general rule that guys that throw over the top, right over the top, don't have a lot of movement? It's true. Yeah. A lot of guys can't get it. And if they, one thing, if they can get, if they can get that ball, you know, grip the ball different, get a little bit of movement on it, it's really right. special. They yeah. can usually get a slider. A little yeah. cutter is usually a good pitch for I them. I guess it has to do, too, with the finger, the grip on the fingers, right? Yeah, that's right. Where the grip is on the baseball relative to the seams. Absolutely. Coming over the top, you're coming straight down through the ball and uh, you really have to change. You have to work with different grips to make the ball move. But Magnifico throws hard and has oh. decent movement. Yes, he does. One-0 -oh pitch to Rondon. Here it is inside. Ball two. You know, like you see a lot of these guys who throw over the top too. They are usually good breaking ball pitches, but when you got a guy like like Damien here who wants to be your closer style pitcher, it's more of getting that ball to cut like you talked earlier, Rock, getting a little cut fastball to hard sink pitch. I think the one thing he really has to understand is that if he keeps throws the ball down in his own with his movement, good things are gonna happen 
get confidence in that. Yeah, but guys like Magnifico, hard throwers with movement, it, it's consistency and release point and delivery, right? Absolutely. You gotta have a repeatable delivery to be able to throw strikes on a consistent basis. Here's the 2-0 pitch inside. Being able to get over that top and get down and through, we say it so often, but it's so important that you do that. Finding that consistency to get ahead of hitters. Anytime you pitch consistent behind, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. And behind he is, 3-0. and oh. In for a strike. Yeah, that game tonight, Team USA against Dominican Republic is gonna be a good one. Two teams that are a bunch of all-stars yeah, on. Yeah, they're, they're talking about uh, both teams advancing and maybe even getting into that final round. That yeah, ball four. So Magnifico pitching himself into some trouble. A couple of men on with one out. That'll bring up Nick Schultz. Here's where we have a young pitcher who's just struggling a little bit. He's flying open with the front side of his body, and it ball just kind of running on him a little bit. He's really going to take a step back and say, you know, get a ground ball right here. It'll get you out of get you out of trouble. Like that? Just like that. Don't you ask for that earlier? Nice job by Magnifico. He gets the Jerry Augustine ground ball. Asking you shall receive. So oh. the Brewers get a win today. Big win for the Brewers. Five to three victory for the Brewers. Uh, we'll be back after this.